Welcome back to the Kickoff YouTube channel. Shout out to the lads. We've, been, we've never stopped talking since we all sat down. <laughs> it's big game uh, Sunday. We've got two Chelsea fans who are strapped in for the ride of their lives. We've got an Arsenal fan. We've got a Spurs fan. It's 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 real rivalry. I, I can feel the emotional rollercoaster about to begin. Who's the most confident on the table right now? It's got to be you, mate. 
Ooh. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Because it's at Emirates, yes, I'm inclined to yeah. say yes. But at the same time, there's so much on stake if we do lose. But ultimately, do I think we're going to lose? No. So You made a good point, though, there. before the show. Spurs have been maxing, relaxing, just re recuperating and resting mm -hmm. after the last one. You have been playing in the Champions League. Do you think that gives you a bit of an edge there, Craig? I don't think it does, man. Like I was, I was listening to the radio on the way here, and they were talking about Odegaard's captain's team notes in the program today, and they were saying they asked him about that, and he was basically saying that like, no, we we want to play midweek weekend, then play the weekend again. Like we like being in that rhythm, and I actually believe Odegaard when he says, that. I don't know about every player in that squad if mm. they feel the same sentiment, but he's that kind of player. So. I don't know if it gives us an edge. I think like, yeah, we've prepared for the game for the last seven days mm. and Angie's a meticulous character, it seems. But that doesn't mean anything on the day, man. That could go out the window. The, the biggest so thing in this game this for me is composure. Yeah. Like when you go to the Emirates and it's a hostile atmosphere, they really hate us. Arteta's really changed the, the, the vibe in that stadium over yeah. the last couple of years. Especially after the Champions League. Exactly. So like for me, it's just in that cauldron, stay composed. If you can stay composed and keep your nerves, then you can begin to play the football you want to play, but you've got to get past that. Do you think they're going to play the same way against Arsenal, even though it could leave you wide open? I think he's, I think we are. I think Ange is, is basically saying to them, because that's the problem we've had with previous teams. I think we've had managers that said, be cautious, step back, counter. And then we've tried to get out of that, that kind of rut of being in that place. And I think with Ange, his whole thing is, Go and play this kind of football. Don't be afraid. And for me, how I'm looking at it, and it seems like how he's probably looking at it, is this is a test for us. Mm. We're second in the league. No one expected us to be here. We've played good football. We've scored a, a load of goals. But this is a test. You played Man United. We thought that was a test. Turns out not really. Not really. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah not really. Sorry, not Matt. really. Man United fans, uh, that, that's how long it takes. Um, sorry. <laughs> we will get on these. This there. is the test. Though. Yeah, this this, this yeah, is yeah, the yeah, test. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Chelsea fans, yep. oh, uh, what, what you're saying, you don't really, you seem really worried, Josh, today. Yeah, I'm really, really nervous. I think there's so much on this game. I feel if we lose this game, like, heads are going to go, mate. I feel like I it, it confirms the season that you're in for. Like, if it's not that it means, like, everything's terrible, let's throw away everything, baby out with the bathwater. But it just shows, like, it, it ain't going to be a top four, top six season. The good news is... We're not losing today. Ooh. I am, I, you know what? I, no, I'm confident today. Villa are there to be got at. Also, a lot of underlying beef here. It's the Crest Derby, isn't it? They yeah, completely it stole our badge. You seen yeah. Villa's new badge? Joke. You wanna, they want to hope that's the only thing from Chelsea they replicate this <laughs> yeah. season. I swear to God. No, do you know what? Villa are there to be got at, I do think. Look, attacking-wise, brilliant team. They've got a showcase of talent up front. However, they've conceded twice as many goals as us. They've also scored Most twice. Of that as was the same James. Yeah, they've also scored twice as many. But what I would say is, any time they've come up against the decent team so far, albeit only twice, they've been beat. Any time Chelsea have come up against the team, we've been. No, I'm joking. No, <laughs> but, uh, but Villa, that, Villa, that's, a, that's a good point, though. Is if you are a decent team, this is the day to prove it. If if we are to do what I still believe we can do, I genuinely do believe that He's we still can optimistic. do it. If we are to do it, today's the day that we need to get the show on the road, mate. We need to get it <laughs> And moving. this is why I'm nervous, mate. Yeah. This is why I'm nervous. Because if it don't. doesn't happen... Yeah. What if you draw? If you draw, is it still a catastrophe? It's another or... myth, isn't it? Because they're averaging a point every game. Yeah, we, like, need, we need to win. We yeah. need to win. Because I, if, 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 if we draw this match, then obviously it's been spoken of many times, but look at the fixtures we've got coming. I think we play Spurs, uh, Arsenal. You've had a great start that yeah. hasn't been taken advantage of. I have sure. to say, though, if Jackson bags a hat-trick and it's 3-0, I'm kind of taking that. <laughs> what? Yeah. Honestly. Oh. I know why. I know Honestly, why. They, what... they, they haven't got a single player this season. Balls, balls. Uh, like, mm -hmm. that's looked like the guy that we we brought this up last time and when we were talking about who was going to carry Chelsea forward we were talking about Reese James who was obviously a right back and Cuckoo who isn't going to be back until next year mm -hmm. someone needs to show up well we talk about individuals there right the one criticism that's always been levelled at us since bringing in Mikhailo Mudrik is we haven't given him a run of games. We haven't given him consistent starts. And this will be the second match in a row he's starting in. You look at the fact that Villa are, especially at fullback, I think they're a little bit to be got at. You know, I don't think Luca, uh, Luca Digne is going to be great, you know, coming up against Mudrik, obviously, on the other side as well. So... I do think that this is the game that... That's when Newcastle had our success as well. Exactly. Yeah. So if we're going to see anything from Mikhailo Mudrik that's going to 
give us a little bit more optimism that, okay, going forward, we've got a really creative outlet there. This is the game to do it in. So one, one way or another, we're going to have questions answered today. But I, I always go into these games optimistic and then 20 minutes in or so, I'm sitting what, there thinking, God, I sh- should have just avoided Brentford. <laughs> what, what about Bowley? Maybe um, get him in to do a little pretty much... Huh? I've heard some horror stories right, there. Come on, then. So... <laughs> I heard a story the other day, and I'm not going to drop any names or say anything, but someone close to a player, a first-team starter in the club. Do you remember last season there was this, uh, this rumour that there was a dressing room bust-up between Todd Bowley and Raheem Sterling? Mm. And obviously a lot of these things you just think, yeah, no, nah, you're just talking shit for clicks. Well, apparently they're not. The papers weren't lying on this one occasion. What apparently happened, this is what I've been told on the rumour mill, um, by someone close, I'll, I'll say the player, someone close to Ben Chilwell, right? They said that, I think it was after the Southampton game, Bowley walked across the Stamford Bridge pitch with Igbali, and we know that actually did happen. Yeah, we've seen that. Apparently, Lamps is in the tunnel, and he sort of says to one of the staff, like, is he, is he going to go into the changing rooms? And he thought, I'm not going to say anything to Bowley. Like, he's running the club, and I'm not going to be here in a couple of months. But he said that he had made it known that maybe it's not the best idea to go in there. Bowley doesn't give a fuck. He's gone straight in there. <laughs> and he singled out Sterling. So apparently he said, Raheem, you know, I, I brought you because you were supposed to be the best freaking winger in the whole world. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Sterling's, Sterling's sitting there. And I said to the bloke, I said, did Sterling say anything? He went, he didn't need to say anything. He said his face basically told him, like, sort of what it was. And he said, and you can't even score or assist against these guys and whatever. And Sterling's probably sat there. I know a lot of people were thinking that Sterling was underwhelming last season. But actually, when it comes to the numbers and when it comes to who did turn up more than anyone in a team where no one really did turn up, Sterling was decent last year, you know. And apparently Sterling sort of sat there and whatever, just sort of took it. Bowley's gone, right, okay, on three, we're going to go, hell yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, the room has just <laughs> fallen, yeah! Fall, yeah, fallen silent. <laughs> so he's gone. I'll try again. One, two, three. Apparently Ben Chilwell went, oh yeah, like that. And that was it. I would for that. And then, and then, and then Bowley, Bowley got pissed off and walked out the changing room. I was actually thinking about it. American culture, it doesn't really always translate Give me your help. over. Yeah, it's mainly it, for the wrestling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't always translate over to English, but I bet he's walked out of that changing room. Everyone's cringed, everyone's skin's crawling, and Pulisic has just sat there inspired. Yeah. <laughs> just sat there like... He's been watching any given needed. Sunday too much, hasn't yeah. he? <laughs> yeah, it, well, I, I feel like there is a hell of a lot of pressure on Chelsea. The, and there's another team playing there, Liverpool. We will keep an, an eye on them, but it's mainly uh, those two games because of the lads at the table. Uh, but to be fair, Liverpool have been annoyingly good this mm. season. Like, they really are consistent, man. Uh, you look sick of that. Kind I of can't. Thing. Honestly, like, where has this come from? No one expected it. We were, we were s- like, literally slaughtering their midfield. Yeah. And the fact that they missed out on Caicedo and all of these players. And then Mo Salah's just found another wind of form, despite everything that was going on with, with the Saudi links. I just don't know how to... I know Klopp's a good manager. I rate Klopp highly. But I still didn't expect them to just come out the block like this. Yeah, I knew they would. And, and, uh, yeah, you did, mate. You, you shouted that. And, and I think one thing I am wondering is, with uh, Europe, Europa League football, how is that midfield going to last? Or, like, because the one thing we know they haven't got is strength and depth in the midfield. Like They, they, have, found a, they have found that those first teamers are working, especially uh, Schlobberzai. He's fucking so good. He's rapid as well. Mate. See how quick he is. Mate, he's like the quickest player in the league apparently yeah. from the, the start. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, fair play to them. Uh, I'd expect them to get a result. I, I would here. wonder though, how long until they need to go strong in that Europa League anyway? You know, because oh. if, if, you, if you look at the group they've got yeah. and obviously the games they'll play building up, I know it's the travel and I know the players are still travelling here, there and everywhere and whatever, but I do sort of think, well, you haven't really got to go full strength until at least you get out of the group. So I, I don't think it's mm. going to be the worst thing in the world. I think they'll keep pace. And I was, I was saying this to, to you, Josh. Liverpool, very simplistically, on-season, off-season, on-season, off-season, which brings us to an on-season. That's, that's uh, all you really need to do to summarise <laughs> Liverpool. Um, and, and sort of speaking of that, um, I've discovered, uh, I say I've discovered it as if I've fucking uh, fu- discovered something in uh, like a cave somewhere. <laughs> no, it was just on Twitter. Uh, there's a league table been created from the beginning of 2023, which I think is really interesting because this time last year, a similar thing came out that um, had Newcastle's league from 2022, uh, start of January, where we'd started really well 
And we were in the top four even then. And that was what gave me the confidence to go, we will get top four, actually. I think this will happen. And it, it did play out that way. So these, you know, yearly tables do have some weight to them. And I thought it was really interesting to talk about how the difference in points is right now. Manchester City are obviously top with 68 points out of 27 games. Then it's Arsenal and Liverpool on 54 and 52. So it's a 14-point gap to Manchester City. And again, it just feels like they're out of sight already. They started this season with six wins in a row. And it's, it, no one even looks a threat to them. Even without De Bruyne, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Mm. But we kind of agreed, I, I can't remember if everyone on the table agreed, but also Liverpool feel like second and third in, in one of those combinations. <laughs> then it gets interesting. Aston Villa yeah. in fourth. Yep. Brighton in fifth. Man United in sixth. Newcastle in seventh. Um, so... You know, Man United and Newcastle already drifted out of that top four uh, from the beginning of the season. Um, and to be honest, neither of us are playing well. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, with Champions League football, we are both really in trouble this season because of the form of Liverpool, Aston Villa and Brighton. And now Tottenham are added to the party because they're in eighth place, just under us, level on points with Newcastle. So but, that shows you the contrast absolutely. between Conte and, and Ange. Mm. Because all of that was probably most of the first half of this year, calendar year, wasn't mm. it? Because now we're second. That's insane. That is insane, mate. And when you look at the rest of the league, some other noticeable things are, well, the main thing is Chelsea. Because obviously the bottom three have been removed because they're interchangeable for the yeah. next teams that have been promoted. But in 16th place are Chelsea in terms of uh, the start of the year, That's who crazy. have only got 25 points. Only Everton have less on 22. Mm. Stinks. Um, so they've got one point less than Bournemouth. They've got less than Palace, less than Wolves. Um, and actually seven points less than Nottingham Forest. Wow. All good sides. Wow. <laughs> Genuinely. Like that, That I knew you guys would, I, I honestly thought about 10th, 11th, 12th. I never thought 16th and basically... This is what happens when you have a team that have just down tools. Though. Yeah. Like that was when we were talking about that at the end of last year, and you were th looking at players like a like a Ziyech, for example, Pulisic, who's gone as well. Like there were players there that just were like actively going, "I don't want to be anywhere near the club. I don't want to be near the first team. I don't even really want to play because, quite frankly, I'm going to get a transfer elsewhere, and if I get injured, mm. that's going to affect my transfer, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to get out of the club." So you, you just see like that is the the result of that. And yeah, we haven't started that well this season, but like. I don't think the tale of the last 12 months is going to be the tale of Chelsea's next 12 months, but it's certainly not going to be like, this is, this is where you've got to put it in context for a Chelsea fan. Like it's not now about, this is why I'm being more realistic. And I said this on the show a couple of weeks ago, like I'm, I'd be happy with a seventh or a sixth this year because I just don't see us pushing on. Well, you guys four. are the outlier in that whole entire table because you're the only ones who've got basically a whole team full of new players. So mm -hmm. you're the only ones who I can actually say something dramatic could change there. The yeah. rest of them, I don't see that happening with every other team there but the interesting thing that I'm thinking now is and I hate to say it is the Premier League the, the things that really matter or who wins it and who gets relegated I think we could be looking at a full-gone conclusion now and we're still in September for the reason being Man City have won 20 consecutive home games they won um, yesterday and the first goal had 46 passes in it uninterrupted they scored in the 7th minute in the 14th minute Haaland has more goals since the start of last season than Chelsea. I think the craziest Insane. thing with that, for me, honestly, as an Arsenal fan and being the team that's probably second closest to actually somewhat competing with a City team is that Kevin De Bruyne is injured now and that he's the one player you look at as an Arsenal fan. I think if that guy got injured, him or Haaland, you're like, you know, we're in for a shot. Haaland got injured last season. Phil, Phil Foden done the number nine, false number nine role and they kept winning games. Mm. And now Kevin De Bruyne has started off the season injured. They're still winning Alvarez games. now has mm. been Alvarez. unbelievable yes. in that mm. position. Yeah. And They haven't had Grealish either, by the way. Yeah, and they had a man yeah. sent off yesterday. It, it made Made no in. difference. Yeah, yeah, they, they were down to 10 men. And the, the other thing I, I pointed out there was the bottom three. For me, Burnley, who played Man United, and I've seen them a few times this season, they look terrible. Mm. They, they could have played till Christmas and not scored against Man United, despite mm. actually having more possession, more shots. <laughs> Luton and Sheffield United, those three teams for me are pretty much bankers to go down. Mm. What yeah. I would say though is. This season, if the three that came up go down, that's very, very much a blip. And when we look at, 
you know, the comparison to other leagues and we say, is the Premier League becoming a farmer's league? Yeah, at the top of the table, I, I'd pretty much agree with you. But I do think as it goes on and we go, we look at European places, yeah, we look at peop- uh, teams having Champions League pushes and at the bottom of the table, I don't think you'd say that because I think although the three that came up are likely to go down this season, the last time that happened was 15 years ago yeah, or something. Yeah, I think that's, that, that is a one-off completely. And, and also, we look at like the Bundesliga, right? And I, I'll hold my hands up, I don't watch much Bundesliga, but although it's a foregone conclusion every single season at the top of the league, has anyone ever seen the Bundesliga 2? Some of the German teams that have gone down in that league. So because we're not invested in it, we probably don't find the excitement and just look at the top of the league. But I think as a neutral fan whose team hopefully won't be involved in a relegation battle, I think when you look at the other parts of the table, there's still a lot of excitement and there's a lot of surprise results. But I think the the emergence over the last couple of years of Pep Guardiola's Man City team is, is saying that all of us, regardless if someone else gets in there like a Liverpool dude, uh, like an Arsenal potentially could at some point, for the most part, we're just going to have to sit and wait for him to leave. And Yeah, you just need so much luck. Honestly, yeah. it's even like with that Liverpool team, honestly, I still say till now, that Liverpool team that I saw was one of the best teams I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It was an unbelievable team. But in terms of trophies, yeah. it doesn't replicate what a yeah. City te- what City t- City's team's done. Mm-hmm. So I just think the amount of luck that you actually need in terms of the right players staying fit. Because right now you look at Arsenal and I do think if our whole team stays fit, for instance, Saliba, Tommy Yasu got injured last season, especially Saliba, that was a finishing blow for us. If Odegaard gets injured right now, or if Declan Rice right now gets injured, or Saliba again, or Saka, have it. you're like, yeah, have it. you'd already say it's cut. A lot of people are already looking at it and saying, City, you're going to win. And that's fair right now. The only chance we have is if our team stays fit and those key players, if one of them go, you might as well give it City right now. I, I was hoping to see City start off a bit slow, like they sometimes do. They, ha- I mean, they just look outrageous. And that goal that Foden scored with the cutback from Walker... Crazy. I was so good. But also, I, honestly, they're winning games, but they just don't look like they've got a second gear still Not to me. They haven't, like, we know what City's like, especially when they get second half of the season when they really click into that well oiled machine. They ain't even got there yet. And I know we like to speak about players and systems and injuries, but to me, none of this matters because there's one man at the top who I love and I glaze over him all <laughs> the time, unapologetically, you where's do. the napkin? It's Pep Guardiola. It doesn't matter. That's why Arsenal ain't got a chance. Because mm. Arteta isn't Pep Guardiola. Klopp isn't Pep Guardiola. I'm sorry. He's the best. Are they just going to dominate now until he leaves? Them? Yeah. Is it, is it that simple? Like we just got now. We just got to look at the watch and just go. Oh, it's three years until Pep. Goes. Yes. And then we might actually have a Premier League. The reason is they're good. Simple? Their reason they're good is because of Pep Guardiola. He taught Arteta everything he knows. Yeah. That's not even shade. That's just. Facts. You know, to a certain extent, I hear what you're saying. It's like his disciples. That's you look at the players that I've played, and whereas you look at Ferguson and the players that I've played under him, what they've gone and done. Like Guardiola is just, yeah, look, listen, I'm with you, and I think he's a real bad cream of the crop. But are you saying uh, in the next three years you're not going to win the Premier League? For me, honestly, even now, this season, right now, if we don't win it, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to turn around and say, oh, I'm so upset. But in the next three years, if we don't win it once, then it's like. Dan, that's Dan, an interesting we've really point built there. a good, strong, solid young team mm. that is growing right now. This is our second season now, third, fourth with Arteta, with this team growing now together. With Declan Rice in here now as well. You don't want to have a, you don't want to have a Pochettino at Spurs moment where the window is there and it yeah. passes you by. Oh, and that's it's not horrible. It's I'm, horrible I'm because then all our Spurs players fault, they, they didn't almost. strike while the iron was hot. Sp- Arsenal are really trying to push themselves yeah. to the limit by spending every summer, even no matter how good they get. Yeah. And, and we weren't even doing that. Yeah, it's an that's interesting all. point that you made there. When, when we spoke about the players that have gone on to manage from Alex Ferguson's teams in comparison to the players that have gone on to manage that worked under Pep Guardiola. You look at like... Steve Bruce. Uh, Steve Bruce. I mean, Michael Carrick had a good season last year, but he's bottom of the championship at the moment. There's, there's, there's not a standout. Oh. Gary Neville, he was absolutely awful over in Spain, <laughs> wasn't he? There's not a standout, Phil Neville, really. Not that shocker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and got, even, got even Roy Keane did, did not have a, have a good career as a uh, manager. They make good pundits. Yeah. But Pep's boys, you know, you look at the ones that, that, that have worked under Pep and things like that. See Xavi doing really well at Barcelona at the minute. Vincent Ten, Ten Hag was kind of a Pep guy, right? Yeah, well, yeah, he was under him at Bayern Munich. Yeah. Yeah. Did uh, Xavi Alonso ever? Yeah, for, play a, for a season. He was yeah. more with. Yeah. Uh, you look at Xavi Alonso, it's Carlo Ancelotti, Jose Mourinho, and Pep Guardiola. Yeah. Jesus. If there's ever a little recipe for a good. Oh, manager, he's a manager hall. 
<laughs> yeah, honestly, it's but crazy. Bobby Robson had uh, Pep and uh, Jose Mourinho yep. work, working yeah. under him, so it all comes back to Jordy's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I'm fucking. I can't wait for this game today. I'm really, Ooh. really excited. Should, should we just do a quick chat about the lineups? Right, we haven't yeah. we haven't had a, a chat about the lineups yet. Let's How uh, we'll go with Spurs. Yeah. It looks like Brendan Johnson is up front. Brendan is Johnson. that right? Um, or is Song going to end up? I think, I think Song's going to be up front and he's going to be on the left. They might interchange a bit, obviously, depending on how they approach the game. But I think it's going to be Song through the middle and, and Brendan Johnson on the left. I don't know Brendan Johnson to be a finisher like that. He can score goals. I've seen him do it and he's very quick, rapid. But he's not like a killer in front of goal, is he? I think Son's more of a killer than him, both footed. More experience. The, the, the speed is the pre for the press, I assume, then. Like, yeah. To, to put, because with that, I mean, you guys have got a ball playing keeper playing today. Or it, it could be to sit back to hit on the counters. And yeah. We are not going to play like that. If we, I can't say we're not, game. but I, I don't <laughs> think we the, will. We'll have to see how it unfolds. Unless you don't press us back and make it so that we just, you know, have to play like that. I don't think we're oh, going to come we're gonna come like you. That. I hear what you're saying. And like we were speaking earlier, you've had a whole week to prepare for this, but the noise that there was happening in the Emirates for that Champions yeah. League game. And it's only going to get lifted now. The crowd are up for it. The players are up for it. <clears throat> going back to Arsenal now in terms of team sheet, what's really hurt me is Martinelli not being there. I know Trossard scored the goals that he does and I'm, I love having Trossard there as a squad player for sure. But Martinelli not being there, if Spurs do press us the way we do, we don't really have anyone else that constantly does those runs in behind like he does. Jesus kind of does it here and there. Saka's more of a ball-playing guy. Every now and again, he does it. Martinelli is that outlet that we go for. And not having him there is a bit of a problem for me. But regardless, I back the team. What yeah, about the stadium? Keeper? What do you make of this uh, Ramsdale being... Kind Three of, in a row. It, 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 yeah, I mean, crazy. Joey made this point last week uh, about Kudicini when Czech came to Chelsea and how how is anyone going to displace him? And then, boom, it was obvious that that was the reason yeah. Czech was brought in. Is it the same for you, do you think? Yeah, I mean, Leno's even commented on it now as well. Leno, who got eased out, eased out of, not even eased out of it, almost kicked out of it by Arteta. He came out saying, Ramsdale came in as soon as he played a couple of games, the goalkeeping coach basically told him, yeah, you're not going to be here. And he was like, I want to stay and compete and he was like no you're not needed so is that maybe the same thing that's happening to it, Ramsdale it is the same thing because I, 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 you saw how Arteta yeah, said you know I didn't have the strength to maybe change things at half time what was it he said at 70 minutes into a game he wanted to change his goalkeeper and he said why can't goalkeepers be rotated I made the analogy to Brian earlier that's like me splitting up with a girl and saying I still really like you. We should still definitely talk. Oh, we meet up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got no interest in it whatsoever. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But I do think that he's eased him out there. He's very much eased him out and gone, I might rotate. And it's like, you ain't planning on rotating. I'd love to see Arteta have the bottle in this match at 70 minutes to go, Raya, you're off. Do you know what? Honestly, bench. with the decisions he's made, I wouldn't be surprised. But it goes back to a saying that Ferguson said. And he said he's always loved his defenders, almost being European because they're just more cold. They're just more cold hearted. Whereas the South Americans, they, they play so much on emotion. And despite Ramsdale being English, he's such an emotional goalkeeper. You see, even in, you were, you were saying it earlier, uh, Craig, um, that he just lives for these moments. Yeah. He doesn't want a guy that just lives for moments. He wants a cool, calm, collected yeah. head in goal. And that's what Raya brings you. Even with our defenders as well. That's kind of what they Bring Do you up. know who's like that, that, that the Everton goalkeeper? Um, the fuck's his name? Pickford. Pickford. Mm. He is <laughs> so <laughs> emotional, yeah, right? Is. Like, he's come, uh, he, he's, a, he's a Sunderland fan, right? He comes mm. to Newcastle and we just ruin his life <laughs> in St. James's Park. And you can see how deeply it impacts his performance. Yeah. And in goal, that's the last place I want yeah, emotion. Yeah, yeah. No. I want a killer. <laughs> yeah. I want a robot mm. there, you know? So but I, they do say that goalies are mad. They, a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot of these podcasts and yeah, stuff yeah, that I watch, yeah. they all say that the goalkeepers are the, that's the position on the pitch. Mm. You'll find these unique characters a lot more yeah. so than out on the field. But I just think the writing's definitely on the wall for Ramsdale. And if he's looking for a club, short trip across, across London. Would you take him? Yeah, of course I would. I'm Chelsea. I'll take everyone. <laughs> No, no. Ramsdale we are so. Keeper. Can I just say we are so obsessed with transfers now. We're we're already thinking, thinking about right. it. We're right. already thinking about how we've he's got, fits we've in got the a team. guy called Kai Havertz. I think you might want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are oh, you are you happy to give him back? No now? returns. You were saying he was fucking him. quality. In no returns. Stop it. You were saying he was quality. <laughs> First on. of all, I would never say he's quality. I was saying that I still back. It. And two now, I back our talents. Our talent's talent ID. I do. Look at this. Sure. Give it you are worried though, right? You are worried. I'm a little bit worried for sure. I mean, last time no time at all from the drop. Yeah. Last time I was here, I was saying, I genuinely think Zinchenko being there might unlock him a little bit, but 
Jesus. <laughs> well, Arsenal fans, Arsenal fans always make the thing whenever anyone talks about Mudrick, and I get Mudrick hasn't really come good just yet, but whenever anyone talks about Mudrick, they go, yeah, and we got Trossard for 30 million. It's like, yes, but you also spent that same amount on Kai Havertz, so it levels itself out I know, a little that bit. makes you feel much better, does that? <laughs> oh, I yeah. Feel like. I've got to uh, take the wins where I can. we got to, we got to talk about today. sponsor. Big love to them. Shout out to... Fair play, uh, the great betting sponsor who are backing this show. And what I love about this app is you can just bet on anything with your mates, especially football. Yeah, exactly yeah. that, mate. Yeah, so th thanks so much for them sponsoring the show. What I love about this app, right, is it's not a conventional bookmaker. It's designed for us to just have a bet against our mates. And I think that works perfectly for the kickoff, right? Yeah. So what I said we do There's a lot today, of WhatsApp chats about to get settled. Yeah, because yeah, of this app. exactly. Because now with this app is here, I just go, all right, just get on. Yeah, let's find out. Well, Put it on. well, why don't we? Why don't we do it? Right, yeah, we, we said it. we had a little bet before the game, and we're going to get into pr predictions in a second. But I have a sneaky feeling, and Craig's looking at me now, and I, and I think he's going to be happy with this. I have a sneaky feeling that Spurs might pull a result today. No. And so, mm. I, I'm, mate, I'm going to say I'm sorry, I'm jinxing you, right? But I'm going to put a tenner on Spurs to win. I got you. Right, we're doing it. We're doing it. it. I got the tenner. I, I, I've, uh, I've already <laughs> sent it to uh, Josh before the stream. Uh, we got a tenner on uh, each. Winner takes all. But the good thing about the bet, you could you could do about anything. You could be in the pub. Who can throw a boot over this pub? Put it on. You can do anything you want. <laughs> He's thrown a boot over a yeah. pub. What have you ever done? <laughs> you ever done? What have I'm, you ever done? And what I love about uh, it as well, like when I win, I'm going to be able to keep the twenty quid as well. There's no commission. Yeah. So we get to keep all the money. They don't take anything, right? Yeah. So that's absolutely brilliant. And also today for the first uh, episode of the show that they're sponsoring. They're giving everyone a £5 free bet. All you have to do when you sign up, it's really easy to sign up, by the way. It takes 30 seconds to do so. Mm. When you do that, just enter the promo code TKO. And then when you do that, you get a £5 free bet. So that's pretty decent. I've right? already done that today. So you lot can do it as well. We've got the uh, the QR code just there. And also, I've just sent the link to the lads in the WhatsApp so that they can pop it in the description for the stream. So you lot can just click on it. And literally, Josh wasn't exaggerating, it takes two minutes to, uh, to sign up. And you can get involved and uh, bet with all your mates on the football. Uh, it's, it's that simple. Yeah, it literally is. And so I'm very excited. In an hour and a half's time, I'm going to be basically celebrating a, a 20 good win. It's that Please simple. Stop it. I've gone Arsenal, so I, I, I'm genuinely uh, confident. I think that there's a there's a real vibe happening at Arsenal. Uh, shout out to Marvin, by the way, uh, our Arsenal fan as well, who often comes on the show. He went to the Champions League the other night and he just said something different is happening uh, at the Emirates right now. With oh, is PSV at home, Marvin? <laughs> Jesus, I'm not saying there isn't a vibe happening, but it's PS. It's their first time in the Champions League after seven years, and it's PSV. That's a dream draw. Doing quite well in the uh, Dutch league, aren't they? Uh, they're doing very good. <laughs> 14 goals and one goal conceded. And, where, and where do you not rate the Dutch league? You have the top. Oh, are they even second, in the top five? Second behind the Europe. Prem, mate. It's the second best <laughs> league out there. Yeah. It was so funny because Josh said this earlier, and then uh, Manel was straight on him like, oh, <laughs> they've, they've won this amount of games, this clean sheets. He had all the stats ready. No, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. That's, that's but... standard Arsenal fans as well, just prepping no, the, with the stats. <laughs> yeah, standard Arsenal fan. Do you be in the Champions League? Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Son up top. Yeah, it's son up top, isn't it? Oh, but, what a but game. But were you that confident after it? Like, do you, act, like, seriously though, do you actually rate PSV? Like, do, do, do PSV, I, no, 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 the PSV course, beat uh, Brighton? Do I mean, do I, re, do I rate PSV? I don't really know anything about PSV. <laughs> just being honest with you, really? I only see what I see and I see that they've been doing well. So it would have been so easy. Arsenal have also been out of the Champions League for seven years. It's our first game back in it. PSV get a draw against Arsenal. Everyone's talking about how well PSG have been doing. They've now gotten the draw against Arsenal and we just slapped them 4-0 yeah. our first game back. So there's got to be credit Bro, given there as well. Great and it wasn't just the 4-0. Mm. They didn't leave their half. It was an absolute domination and the energy was insane. And this game... I hope it's boy. You I went know. out to Arsenal Sporting last year and PSV, as someone who doesn't really know much about either team, to me, I would assume they're not a million miles away. So to go out to Sporting last year and then to go and slap up PSV, it's just, you know. I Sporting Lisbon on my team in Good Portugal, Chelsea. so don't talk too bad about Sporting. Oh, really? <laughs> also, also Chelsea's new yeah. feeder club as well. Yeah. So you're going to be part of the Chelsea family. I hope you're excited for that. Well, every, everyone are unofficially Chelsea's feeder club <laughs> anyway, so let's just have that there. Uh, we've got a, an embrace on our screen of um, oh. Can we can we have some just. predictions as well though from the last? Yeah, yeah, predictions lads. We'll start with Craig. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two two. <sighs> oh, because Martinelli and Trossard aren't playing, I'm gonna go two one. If they were here, I would have gone three one. But yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'll go. I was gonna go score draw. I think I'll go one all. I'm gonna go two one to Spurs. Arsenal score first. I'm gonna say two one Arsenal. 
However, um, just Chelsea have just kicked off now on uh, our second screen up there. Um, do you guys g genuinely think you get a result today against Villa? No, I think I'm going to oh, go man. score draw. I backed a score draw when I was reviewing the game on my channel, but now it's got here. You know, some beautiful plays so far. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 now it's here. I genuinely do think that we're going to kickstart our season here and we're going to get a win. Villa, a very good team attacking, but I do think a lot of people overrate them ever so slightly. So I do think they're there to be got at. Um, we just got to... Do you know what it is? We need a bit of bottle. We really do. Like, that's one thing. I know you can say um, everything from a technical standpoint and, and obviously, you know, maybe being someone that's not a great footballer himself, I, I might not be the best person to even say it. But one thing, emotionally, we just need a bit of bottle, just oh, a bit of precision. Sorry, Mudrick's just done a great ball in behind. Enzo with the cross. Whew. Need Koulibaly there. <laughs> yeah. like against Spurs last season. Yeah, we just need a bit of bottle to actually take the game by the scruff of the neck. Like, it's, I, I compare it, I always like use an analogy to boxing, yeah? It's one thing getting in a ring. It takes a lot of bottle to get in a ring, but it takes even more bottle to win. Do you know what I mean? And it's the same in football at the minute. It's all well and good playing some lovely play and having some good passages, which some people may or may not agree with, but you've got to have the bottle to go and win and even win ugly. And even we speak about Man United who haven't looked that good so far. At least they have won ugly a few times. And that's what I want to see from Chelsea. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I feel like I'm feeling the same way about Newcastle at the minute where just, you know, when they're just not clicking, mm. it's so frustrating, man. Would you put that down to? Uh, uh, there's a few things at Newcastle at the minute. We're just lacking um, calmness under pressure and big mm. game players. Like we've got a few injuries. Like Joe Willock has been a real miss. Joe Linton's been injured. Um, Tenali's barely oh. trained apparently. Um, so yeah, we're not clicking into gear. But uh, oh. we got a nil nil against uh, Milan. And it's fucking really kicking off in both games. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm struggling to make my eyes on like, okay, a fucking cross tennis sides. match. I'm going oh, uh, two I'm games. not even watching this. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is irrelevant. Yeah. It is, can we just talk about Jesus' position here? Is he on the left? He's on the left. Oh, I would have liked him up top. But so then that mean Trossard through the middle? Then? No, Trossard's not playing. playing. Oh, I thought Trossard you said... and Martinelli are both. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Trossard no, was both, playing. Uh, man, I would have loved it if Basuma. he was. Basuma's looking like a you beast here. Turn me on, Basuma. Madison got the chance to switch it left side. Spurs on, Brennan. Trust what you want, Brennan. Inside, shot, over. Ooh. First shot on goal. I like that. I like that. Set the tempo. Like. <laughs> Set it. Udogi won you his first battle with Saka as well. You didn't, like win, nah, you didn't win no battle. That's not him about one. Nah, you didn't show him no weight. Mate, I, I love being so emotionally invested. You start like celebrating Come corners. On, boys. Man. Yeah, that's, that's what you know man. Set it up. Yeah, he's got the fresh trim as well, Brennan Johnson. It's that new <laughs> money, man. Mm. Has he started the game first, but so no, it's his first start. Wow. Forty-seven million pounds, what man. He needs start. to start showing that. How much did he pay for him? Forty-seven point nine million, to be mad. precise. Corner mad. ball for Spurs. Uh oh, chance for the dig. <laughs> oh, oh offside, offside, oh. offside. offside. He's way oh, offside. Way offside. son, it put it in the back of the he's net. Offside man. in the goal. Manel getting oh. hot. No, 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 no. I oh, a little, little cheerleader kick the ball in. It's all right. VAR. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, he's way offside. Yeah, he's... What was he doing? <laughs> yeah. I was about to... Five yards. Doing? Five yards offside. Well, it's been a very good start, hasn't it? Whew. What, so, for Chelsea? No, just, just for football, mate. Oh, just, just for football. For, football. <laughs> just for, yeah. for the world of football. <laughs> Question for the table about this, um, this switch of the goalkeepers all. Do we, do we think that that's Ramsdale basically done? Yeah. I do. Yeah, I do. At I do. Arsenal. I just think, like... If he's bringing a keeper of Reyes' quality in and knowing that other clubs wanted him as well, he doesn't strike me as the type of keeper that's going to sit on the bench and wait his turn. It means he's seen something, I think, about Ramsdale that maybe he's not sure for the future. Mm. Like, that's, I think Arteta, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, he seems like a very meticulous individual in that way. I don't think he's just going to sign in for the sake of it and then rotate. That, that hardly ever happens in football. What's interesting is that two, three years ago, we were off the Raya before we got Ramsdale. We oh, really? were off the Raya. Yeah. yeah, we wanted him and we didn't get him. We obviously got Ramsdale and Arteta seems ruthless. He seems Raya like was number really two at Blackburn once. Yeah, that's crazy. Number two. You know, I, I like story. a ruthless manager though. You, yeah, ha you, can't be, you can't be overly loyal. And the one good thing about the Ramsgate situation, I think, and there's a thing that I think we all need to want our clubs to avoid, is what went on at Man United, um, is n n having players that are surplus to requirements and being obviously surplus and being players that look useless. You, and you'll get no money for them and they just rot in your club. Ram, Ram, um, Ramsdale will definitely get... Uh, 
He goes in January. Yeah, he, but he'll get a club in for him and you'll get decent money for him. Ramsdale will go in January because if you're looking at Ramsdale at the minute, I think that he should be England's number one. I think that I'd put him above uh, Pickford, or, but obviously Definitely. Pickford has sort of a back catalogue of really good performances for England and he, you know you know what Southgate's like. He'll pick you whether you're in form or not. So I think that Ramsdale... <laughs> yeah, mate, Ramsdale Pickford did get cancer and he'd be starting. Oh, mate, 100%. Yeah. Ra- Ra- but Ramsda- um, Ramsdale's going to be looking at that mm. and Ramsdale's going to be thinking, mate, I need to go out and get first team football. And then Harry Maguire will bail him up and go, you don't, honestly, uh, you're <laughs> fine. Got one on one. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, so Here's the one on one. Here's the one on one. Good ball. Arsenal awesome looking. No. Oh, they remember. There was um, some decent play from Arsenal there, but Spurs do really well to play it out Brennan from the Johnson, box. Johnson, he's a blower. And um, blew it out the line. Has it gone off? Yeah. Oh, Did man. anyone hear uh, Daniel Levy's yeah. comments about obviously the appointments <laughs> of Conte and the appointments of Mourinho? And he had yeah. said that we tried the proven winners route. Um, and obviously it just didn't work for us sort of thing and that's why he's so happy so far with Postacoglu <laughs> because it's just a different style of manager and I actually think that it filters through to on the pitch because obviously systematically the, these managers play different but Spurs to watch as a neutral if you can take away any alliance to your own club Spurs to watch this season I think are looking a million times better than yeah, they've looked over the past two, three years and, and they're playing high up the pitch against Arsenal here just as uh, Craig said before the game that Postacoglu says we're going to play the exact same way they're not sitting back and hoping to catch them on the counter. They're in their faces here. And, uh, Come on, Chelsea. This is the first time that Spurs have looked like a team that really mean business in a game like this for a long time. Mm. But they have looked poor for a while. So it's, it, they're looking good now, but they've been looking. So the standard which they were playing at before compared to now, it's not like they were already good and now mm. they're looking great. They were very poor. And Just now give us some props, good. bro. Just no, give us, no. Give us some props my, to keep My props moving, is man. you're looking good now, but it's... Nothing crazy, but do, we'll see. Do you know, do you know the, <laughs> the thing I find really interesting is when, is when football clubs go, this didn't work, we need to try something that's completely different. And by that, I mean managers who are like Conte and Mourinho, who yeah. are very similar, um, quite hard, quite defensive, and quite negative, and can, can really bring the morale of a club down quite quickly if they're not <sighs> getting exactly. their own way. Yeah. So... Um, they they go for the nice guy next time. And I think Ange really comes across that way. He's charming. And you can get a bounce back feeling from that. But is that permanent? You know, once once the, the players get used to, all right, Santa's managing when now, we all yellow. love him. Uh, how, how, how long will that stay? And the reason I bring that up for is, I think that there was a lot of that that happened with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when he took over. He was seen as a relief from Jose Mourinho. Thank God we got rid of that prat. And there was a, there was a, a surge in Manchester United. But after a while, when good guy Ole is just Ole and you forget how what an arsehole Jose is, mm. like, are you still going to maintain those running levels? And what we've seen with Oli is, that naturally came to an end, and what did they do? They went back for a, a guy who had the standard bearer, Ten Hag, who doesn't have a loving, warm, caring personality, who is an arsehole to a degree, and will upset players. You don't like him, do you? No, but... The, the, it, no, but do you like him? Uh, no, I, I, there's no like or dislike, it's I don't rate him, I, okay. I, don't, I, don't, di- I don't not rate him, but I don't rate him highly. I, I just look you. at him, I'm like, hey, he's just a football manager, I don't think that there's anything that special about him yet. Ooh. I might be proven wrong. I think, he's, I think he's better than Solskjaer, though. Like, I always had it in my head that Solskjaer was a little bit tactically inept for the role, for, oh, the, yeah. for, the, for the thing of the yeah. job. And then, obviously, regardless of Ten Hag, when you bring it back to Postacoglu now, I think with Ange, I can't say he definitely is equipped for the job, but he definitely, like, I don't have the feeling that he's not. And I had that from the start with Solskjaer. I'm a million percent agreed with you. I guess the point I'm making is more more about sometimes we will get a false reading from what's happening on the pitch based on how the players are feeling about the manager rather than and that will last sometimes a whole season you can see a manager get unbelievable things out of players for a season but to do it consistently over a long period of time that's where we find out what managers are made of and that's why I do give credit to Jurgen Klopp Pep, and obviously Pep Guardiola but I, I think yeah. what Ange is doing right now is great but my point is is it could just be the thank fuck we don't have that old head school teacher in charge of us yeah. and we really like this guy let's play our hearts out and it'll work for now but I just don't I don't know if it's going to last. And mm. that's where games like the day are where we find out. Like, Because um, Arsenal are as real as it gets, obviously. Odegaard's in everyone's face here. Um, pressing high up the pitch. 
No, it's a big game, 100%. Look, touching on what you said, it's a big game for Tottenham, for mm. sure, no doubt. And this is, if they do lose now, <laughs> um, like I was speaking to Craig earlier, if it's a 2-1 and they've really pushed us all the way, they can actually still take some pride from it, yeah. considering it's the Emirates. But if they get played off the park, then it's... Well, listen, the first I, 10 I, minutes, I'll be honest, yeah, Arthur right. ain't even had a spell of possession really yet. Mm. I know it's early, obviously, and they, they will obviously start to have that, but... <laughs> They're not giving Rice as time well, either, though. It's, they do it's definitely started a bit scrappy, for They're sure. doing the right thing. The midfield aren't getting any time here. Um, so he's definitely sent them out exactly as you said, like. Mm. How are Chelsea doing so far, lads? I think we've been all over them. Like, There's been a lot of pressure up in uh, their final third. So we've um, we've actually misplaced a few crosses. Like Sterling could have, um, mm. could have slapped in a cross there when he didn't. So overall, we've been very good. We've been very high up the pitch and attacking. So Depends, so far, depends so what you're into. Are you into goals and points or are you into possession? <laughs> because I, as a Chelsea fan, really, really rate possession. I, yeah. too. But I, I think the league think. should be determined on possession. Yep. That speaks, speaking of which, uh, Burnley had more of that than Man United yesterday. It didn't mm. do them a great deal of good because they lost. Um, what do we think of Man United in the last week? They went to Bayern Munich. They lost, <coughs> but they scored a few goals away they, they, and some decent goals. Oh, um, I mean, arguably, other than an Onana absolute howler, they would have got an away draw at uh, the Allianz, which is a pretty good result. You, you could argue that. The, the issue is, is when I watch the game, like, yeah, if you take the Onana goal out, in terms of scoreline, okay, then it's a draw. But it always felt like whenever Bayern just wanted to turn up the, the gear, they would just blow them away. And Man United were chasing a shadow. Like, the, the minute Man United got near them, they just extend the lead without even... It was it's a, not, they weren't even in fifth gear. It was a spirited loss, wasn't it, yeah. for Man United? And what I would say is I genuinely do think that Bayern are probably favourites for the competition this year barring Man City who you'd obviously you'd always make them favourites under Pep Guardiola I think Bayern have a really really good chance of winning it this year Chelsea are in now oh <laughs> come on <laughs> Mudrick with Mudrick a with dodgy the... cross there that no, was that defended wasn't that easily that wasn't that bad yeah, well, it that, wasn't terrible, but it was straight into the defence Chelsea, Jackson Chelsea, missing Chelsea open looking, balls again. <laughs> if Almiron does that cross you're going it's a wonder cross <laughs> I'm, I'm all over him for it, actually. Um, <laughs> no, I, it was a, it was a spirited loss from Man United, I've, and, and I'm not, it wasn't a bad performance by any means. I've got but some stats yesterday from the Burnley game. So, <laughs> I mean, expected goals, whether you rate XG or not, Burnley outgunned them in that. Expected assists was even. Ball possession, Burnley had 62%. Mm. Total shots, Great 12. Challenge. Shots on Great target, Burnley, Burnley edged them in that. Um, shots off man. target, corners, it was nine to five. So pretty much in every metric that you could go apart from the final result in the game, Burnley were the better side yesterday. So I, I think it's too soon off a 1-0 win at Turf Moor. Let, let's be honest, Burnley have been absolutely rubbish on what I expected of them. I thought they were going to come up and play some really good football and be a team that pulled off some upset wins and whatnot, and it hasn't looked that way for them. I don't think you can say off yesterday's result that you've turned a corner. You know, and I think, I think I think Man United fans are very easy on Ten Hag. Like I, I, I do think I, I was oh, my my best friend's a Man United fan. I was watching it in the pub with him yesterday, no, and at the end I went, no, "Not great, was it?" And he said, "No, it was, it's good. Good point oh. away." Oh, here we go. Oh, oh save. Save. Arsenal threatening. Saka still in the box. Don't foul him. Do not foul him. Sh should that have been a goal, mate? Come on, nah. like, he should have slotted that. You think so? The angle was tight. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Gabriel Jesus, though. He's Mudrick like, would have put that away. Absolutely. No, nah, that was that. Uh, that was just a good oh, save. Oh, that was a good save, right? Mate, that good was play. not a foul. That's so yeah, it was. Oh. He bought it. He bought, he bought it. it. Yeah, he but it's a foul. He bought yeah, it, okay, and he okay. and you know he paid. Very very okay. soft. So <laughs> just to rewatch this, cross into the back post to Jesus, who it's a tight angle. Oh, though. and it's first time as well. I think that's a decent save. That first one v one for Saka. There, he's a problem. Yeah. yeah, maybe should have scored. Decent from the keeper. Nah, nah, nah. Um, nah. So your mate was in the pub right. saying he was happy with happy with a good goal. Yeah, he, he he was happy with it. And obviously, look, it's very rich coming from myself who would like three points, you know, more than anything at the moment, regardless of performance. But I just think that Ten Hag gets a lot of slack from from the Man United fans. He's listen, he's clearly won that fan base over because you don't often hear anyone speaking bad of him, whether it's Ever. people that have platforms on the internet or my mate in the pub. You don't hear people speaking badly of Ten Hag when I do think there are, you know, serious concerns oh, and on. reasons to, to ask it questions. <laughs> so, you know what? It's interesting because I put a clip out from the kickoff and I got a load of stick for it. Uh, and Man United fans were going, the reason we give him a free pass 
And I said, you, 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 sorry, I said, you can't criticise the owners and the players and not the manager. They're all responsible to some degree. Mm. The reason we give him the free pass, they said, is because he won an FA Cup. He got, um, he got us into the Champions League first season. That's why we give him a free pass. And I'm like, him. the players also did all that. Yeah. You're not giving them a free pass. The purple patch that Marcus Rashford have, I refuse to believe that any team in the Premier League could have a player in that <laughs> sort of form and it not propel them further than let's say what the manager is doing now you can flip well, that it was also could... from Ten Hag by the way you're completely wrong that, exactly it was Ten that. Hag who improved him to do that let alone the fact that six games this season one goal one car accident mm. so that's that's Marcus Rashford's number this season mm. he's he doesn't look like the same player as last season and what we, what I said on the show mm. last week is if you stop Rashford and Bruno you stop them from from winning because mm. Ten Hag does not have a, a plan B and in that game against Burnley, what did it come down to? A world-class wonder strike from Bruno. Without that, it's... Yeah. Honestly, there are some teams where it's like, if you stop this player, Oh, it's gonna... no! Oh, oh, Arsenal are getting in behind it. Will, no. yeah. Is he just, he just Jesus. passed him. He just gave him a through ball. Aye, though. Saka's got What's him this? terrified. Oh, he just wasn't even checking his Saka's wind mirrors. Look. His Saka, oh, that Saka. is horrendous. He just didn't check his wind mirrors. It's the aura, mate, from Saka. <laughs> That's the aura. <laughs> but going back to you, like you going back look. to United, honestly, there are what some teams that? where you can say if they're missing a play, it's going to hurt them. For sure, it's going to. But with United, I, I can't, I, I haven't seen it like this before. Without Bruno or Rashford, it. It doesn't just hurt them. It takes away everything they've got. Yeah. They're nothing but them. It's crazy. And, that, and, that, and, and it's my, crazy. my point was that, you know, you, uh -huh. you haven't implemented a system here and you're relying solely on... And look, every manager relies on their best players, but like the, 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 the heavily amount that Ten Hag does is, is ridiculous, in my opinion, when you've got a lot of players in that um, team which have quality. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to give credit to a couple of players who I've seen Rodin, who, are, yes. who are rating. Uh, Hannibal looked okay. Yeah. Um, he yeah, looks he pretty decent so far. And Hoyland, I, I think, looks really, really yeah. good so far. Mm. But he needs service. Can I also just mention that if I was a Man United fan, I'm far from run, but the first thing that would come to my mind that none of us have mentioned is the injuries. And injuries do play a significance. Yeah. For yesterday's match, Maguire, Mount, this is either injured or unavailable for uh, selection. Maguire's a Ma blessing. Ma 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maguire's Ma a blessing. Maguire, Mount, Sancho, Martinez, Wambasaka, Malasia, Shaw, and Anthony. So it's not also like they've got a full strength for 11 every week and they're just not, you know, not ticking and not... But when but you look at the teams that they've beaten, Wolves... Burnley, like when, when, when and, and was it Forest? Sorry, Forest, yeah, yeah, and, and they've struggled against all three of those. So three of the worst teams in the league, with all due respect, oh. uh, and they've struggled even to. to they've not, not, not played well in any of those games. By Wolves and Burnley, completely outplayed them. Yeah, Forest one I thought was impressive. They yeah, went they two goals back. down. They came back. They showed good character. And I <clears> think even that then that's to go two goals to, down, you're fucking having a mountain to climb. And this is the other thing. This is why I always say that context is everything, right? Because if you think about the context of this, people straight away would hear me talking what they would perceive in a negative way about Man United and they'd think, well, hold on, who are you to say this? But context is everything. You read out the table since the start of the year. So yeah, yeah for Chelsea, an, an away win at Burnley, even if it was 1-0 and we did get outplayed on the statistics and everything, I would take that and be very happy Ooh. with it. But the context behind oh. Man United, who were, what, fourth in that table since the start of the year, third, I think it was, uh -huh. maybe. The context behind their form at the minute is a little bit more They're concerned. dropping off in terms of the turn of the year. So, obviously, last season they finished third, but from the turn of the year, I think they're sixth or seventh now. Mm. So, they, they are dropping away, and the worry for them is if Rashford does continue to be out of form, well, then, Hoyland better, better start, you know, quick. And he, he looks good, but he's a young kid. That's a massive amount of pressure, even for the money they've spent, to put onto him. Um, and... I don't know. I, my main question for the for the chat is Onana uh, or oh, no no as he looked uh, against uh, Bayern Munich. He gifted them a goal, and in this season, you're thinking for all of the areas of um, weakness Man United have, do you really need to spend sixty million pounds? on a goalkeeper right now. Okay, you say you do. He must be an improvement. He must be a massive improvement, in fact. And right now, does he look that much better than David De Gea, if at all? 
I don't think he does. I think it's a it's a weird one. What I find the most weird thing is that David Day is still a free agent as well. Like it's yeah. there's some, something weird's going on there. Surely a club just picks him up. He's yeah, o- he's over the hill though. Is he though? How he's old is he? How old is he? You no, know, as like I'm talking about his prime. He's over the hill. I mean, the, he's, he's like over 30, the hill. He's a thirty odd year old. And he's not a he's modern keeper. In the he's not good with the ball at his feet. He's more of just but like a shot. It's stopper. the wages United were giving him for him to go from that to whatever team he's going to. You might as well yeah, go but, Saudi. But to, to, yeah, but to not pick up one nil Liverpool. Yeah, just. Say it was oh, a does, does David De Gea uh, being replaced by Anana either save you or accumulate you more points this season? Because I would argue yeah. that although Anana is one for the future almost and he's stylistically going to suit the way that Ten Hag wants to play a little bit better, for this season right now, I couldn't say, I couldn't hang my hat on saying, yeah, it's a massive upgrade for this I season. Think, I think it will. When Varane and Martinez come back, that's a, that's a decent centre-back duo. Yeah. And having Onana behind him as well, it is, it's really going to help that Ten Hag type of football that he does want to and play. And it wasn't like so De Gea wasn't making mistakes. Like De Gea was making mistakes last season as well, right? And fair enough, Onana, like that so was, was a howler. So it, was a, it, was a, it was a howler. But then and, also, Onana's made multiple mistakes this yeah. season. But De Gea, did, but De Gea, but De Gea did as well. But you've just, you've just literally spent an extra 60 million on someone to make the same amount of mistakes. I think there's like a there's intangibles in the way that Anana plays with his feet and his passing that like unlocks um, positions further up the pitch. I, I get like, that that's like, the there's, idea. There's, there's part, yeah, there's part of that. So like it won't necessarily be like directly Do seen either. Do you think either. you're really seeing that now? I think it's part of it, Cause, right? Because like, KG, he to, uh, shout out to KG, he said, oh, well, David De Gea made a lot of mistakes when he came to the club as well. Difference being, David De Gea was a 20-year-old kid when he started in Man United. This is a 27-year-old experienced yeah. goalkeeper who was supposed to not be coming in to learn the trade, not to be coming in to get used to being in the Premier League. You paid uh, that much money for a 27-year-old to be ready now. Yeah. And so far, I'd be worried. Like, I'm not saying he won't make it, he won't improve. I think we all accept, like, sometimes he looks good. But to make such basic errors at this stage, they should be worried. You'd expect him to be that cooling head for the yeah. ever-changing centre-backs that United are having, uh-huh. constantly change. You'd expect him to be more of the cooler head, but he's not. He's adding to the problem, which is a big problem for United. Not for me as yeah. Arsenal fan. It's a great... My, my, my favourite bit of Man United fans going, yeah, but his apology, though. <laughs> I tell you what, I, he really listen, owned that. I hope, he, I hope he doesn't mistake. Every mate. week he comes out saying, I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm going to be like, sorry, mate, I forgive you. And yeah, that's you. the thing that they criticise like Maguire and all them for is oh, sick, sick your apologies up your ass. But when Onana does it, <laughs> what a guy! I mean, Maguire's done like fifty apologies there constantly. Yeah. So. <laughs> but but I, I, Onana's I, almost there. It's one in, little, yeah. another forty-nine to go. I, 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 right now, I, I accept Man United definitely have injuries and they've got a lot to, to come yeah, back for sure. But there's definitely a few issues there where you're like, well, what if this isn't? just a bad run of, of mistakes from Onana just settling in. What if this is what you've signed for £60 million when... How much did Arsenal spend on... Uh, it's a £3 million loan deal for Raya with £25 yeah. million. So th- less oh, than 30 So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, so far, they look like they've gotten a much better deal than Man United have, mm. to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, oh, we well, could be wrong. We spent He's definitely on mil. fraud watch, though. He's definitely on fraud he watch. He should be, yeah. yeah. He's on fraud watch. Because it wasn't like the mistakes he's made. Like, when he torpedoed that Wolves player that should have been a penalty for example and then a couple of his other saves that have ended up in the back of the net and that Bayern one biggest stage of them all that that is the moment you shine Mm. and to to gift them a goal like that I mean it's hard enough against Harry Kane and co that was mental most of the the shots he's faced on target as well have ended up in the back of the net absolutely his stats are horrendous but this is Man United right now and I I get Man United fans they're in a situation where they go when, whenever you criticise the situation there, they go, well, what do you want us to do? Sack him. What do you know? It's just just to acknowledge it. Mm. Just to acknowledge, because right now, that's where I'm seeing the, the issue with the club fan base is they're in la-la land with the mm-hmm. Ten Hag. They're not able to like, cause it's all the players' fault. It's all the Glazers' fault. Yeah. And it's like, how you, you're struggling to win games against teams with far less quality in their teams than what you've got. And, and they where, got dominated. Yeah. That's the, where I'm coming from. The fans will have a lot more patience than the dressing room will have, to be honest. Because if you look... They're in behind. Chelsea! Oh, oh my, my God, God! He's done it again. It's Jackson with another it's sitter. Safe. And it's, he's missed. It was a save. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> Can I just say, Mikhail Mudrick has just done a reverse ball here that was absolutely ridiculous. This is what they got to cling on to. Ridiculous. Yeah, what, no, no, but listen. Watch, no, this. Thinking, watch, watch, watch this, though. Like This is insane. Oh, it is a good pass. Oh. And it's onside. Oh. And it's That's in behind. Jackson. It's a great save, to be fair. It's a very... 
very good. Are, are we saying great <laughs> save or are yes, we, a save? Mate, you're one on one with the keeper. Oh, I want, mean, come on, that, you'd want that it doesn't matter. Away. Come you'd on, want oh that away. that's a good save. Mate, 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 he's made himself big. How many goals has Jackson scored this I, season? I don't know if the fan behind the goal was was a Chelsea fan or a Villa fan getting angry at him and cussing him. That's confidence, right there. That's confidence at high right now. When it comes, it will come with Jackson. I honestly believe that records are for DJs, mate. He looks so raw. He looks so raw. He looks like I'm <laughs> good. I like I, look Jackson's movement is good, yeah, yeah, right? For sure. Like you, you can see like the working out try, but the answer he just is fucking it up at the end, right? Oh, Fair enough. It. But it keeps happening every yeah. fucking week, and it's not just like he's had one of the misses of the season on his record. So when when he gets through like that, I can see Josh's point of all right, keeper did well, but. Got no if, if that's Callum Wilson, that's in the back yeah, of the net. 100%. That, or any other and decent striker. He looks like a level. worse than Kevin. Even a Danny Ings puts that away. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's basic. What I would say is this is one thing that I don't really want to entertain. What? I don't really want to talk it into existence. But don't let him cut on that Have left. you ever seen Jackson's oh. miss? Don't let him cut oh. on the net. Oh. Oh. Yes! Saka! Saka with what the goal! What a player! Oh, Romero, oh, what a goal. finish! It's got to be an own goal. Owen Saka does the goal! Oh, and Saka does and he did the goal! Oh, he did Madison, he did Madison hey, celebration. That's the World oh. Cup win on Romero with a world-class finish. What a guy! Oh. I love him! Why did Romero, man? I love Why? him! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Romero, right back at you. Hey, that was cheeky from Saka, you know. I like it though. But remember when um, Rashford scored and then he went and did mate, Rashford's I celebration? You low key rate the celebration. Listen, if nothing. you can't handle this guy on the 1v1. One one and a Tottenham, 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 a but, Tottenham but like leaving what, him what on Craig the 1v1. One you one. can't let him cut inside. Yeah. You were calling it and he did it as, as you were calling it. I mean, it. If, he allowed it. Yeah. But I mean, great little overlap by Ben White. This is, this is a horrible um, by both Look at this. That, um, was, that was a cross, wasn't it? It was going no, in anyway. It was going in anyway. I'm joking. The keeper looked like he was. It was definitely a shot. It wasn't on target. The ball looked like it was stuck behind the shot. Keeper gets. That, that, you yeah. could see from behind the goal where the actual uh, oh, we'll screen see. was. It was. It was. It was probably. Oh. Uh, it looked like it was headed for the far post. It was, let's see. Look from this angle. Come on. Yeah, I think that was a close one. Strike. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Um, but ultimately, if the player doesn't stick his leg out, it probably is either off the ball. No, post. but honestly, again, I, fair enough, I hear is I, I hear it was a deflection. Cheeky. But again, on the 1v1, they're really allowing the guy on a 1v1 against Saka constantly, time and time again. I'm I'm surprised. You don't yeah, want to do that. You've got to what drill a, that. What a player. You've got to drill that. You can't Great allow... challenge. Do you, do you um, miss out on Madison? Like, would you, would you have liked him in the Arsenal team? They got Odegaard. Oh, I, I, I yeah, but as in, could, so could Odegaard much. and Ma Madison play in the same team? I think they could play in the same team. Yeah, I think they could. I mean, we've got Vieira and Odegaard right now playing. And do I think Madison is ahead of Vieira right now? Of course he is. Do I you feel like you've missed out there, though, with a no, I, player? No, I can't say it's missing out. I feel like I've missed out on other players. I wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily say it's something so crazy like the that. It's a worry, though, when they, like... their profiles are so similar. Though. Yeah, they are very uh, It's so jarring when you can see the goal like that, man. Like, if it's a great goal, cool. There's nothing you can do. But these kind of goals, it's like, why? And it would be Romero of all the players to do it as well. Hopefully he gets a red card next. <laughs> I think Saka starts for any team in the world. I know what it's we're a big saying, shout, is, it, is this curling in? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, a it looked like it was going. Honestly, again, going yeah. back to that, mm. is there what team out there? I'm genuinely curious. Would he not start for right Liverpool, now? The first, Liverpool. The first, the first place that everyone would Liverpool. Say is the first place no, is for me for over Salah. No, no, no. But no, he would be he's accommodated. On the other side, Diaz. You'd be accommodated. You know, he's on the right. No, yeah, isn't Salah on the right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think the first question right now is: Is there a better right winger out there? A bar Salah, obviously, that's the king right there. Then Saka. Is there another right winger out there that's better than him? Vinicius is off the left. Foden again. We talked about this that time when we had that biblical argument. Phil Sterling. Phil Foden played very well there for City, like. So between them two, isn't it? Yeah, Sterling. Yeah. Mind you, I think one thing. One thing we learn about the <laughs> He actually believes it as well. Uh, he actually believes it. When we play in the Champions League though, like you, you kind of you get you get a sense like Newcastle <clears throat> against Milan, I really felt like we were putting our place a little bit there. I was mm. getting real excited. And then we got so dominated by mm. Milan and it made you go like because I'm not following like every single kick in the fucking Serie A. And it, like we've played Liverpool this season. We we basically were the better side. We played City where City were the better side, but I felt like we were in the game. Yeah. Milan, 
it was embarrassing. And I don't mean that in a, I wasn't proud of the lads. Like, we gave 110, mm -hmm. 120% just to get that nil-nil, thank fuck. But the way they played us off the park was the most mm -hmm. levels feeling I've had in a while in a game of football for Newcastle where it, we just didn't feel like we were on their I, level. I, I, I don't at all. think we ever doubted that if you were to go through that group, though, it would very much be your home form in those. In those. Oh no, that's what I'm holding on. To, yeah. So I think that history might actually reflect a lot more positively on that nil-nil. I, nil. I just mean when we're talking about a question of like wingers, um, it really made me realise like in <laughs> in Europe right now. There's a lot of quality that I probably am not giving the credit it deserves. Mm. Yeah. Like there was that uh, that one lad who terrorised us, Josh, um, who Chelsea were interested in. Leao. Bournemouth one up against Brighton. Oh, so oh wow. Dom. that's so Brighton. <laughs> I know oh, someone no, who no, may or may like not this. have I them in a bit. I do not like this. I do not like Spurs this. Spurs in trouble. You about Back post. <gasps> oh, good. That, good could been, that could have been another own goal. I think he chested it. That could have been another own goal. No, but honestly, Mystic touching Jerry. on what you're saying, Brian, I completely agree with that. Yeah. If you don't play in the Premier League or for Real Madrid, Atletico, kind of, Barca or Bayern, then not many people know about you. Mm. But honestly, there's so many. Uh, for me, a guy, is like a guy like Dybala, if a guy like Dybala came over to the Premier League, I know he's always injured, he would be looked at as like, wow, this is a sensation. Not now, though. Like, not not yeah, now. Maybe not now, but I mean, earlier on, definitely. I mean, yeah. you say that not now, but he's he's almost having another revival under Mourinho yeah. at Roma. Yeah. He is absolutely killing it. So there's so I mean, many that, that Leao guy, he was like oh. uh, St. Maximin on steroids. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, he, he was horrifying. Rhys James absolutely pocketed him at Stamford Bridge. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even bad at <laughs> I, 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 no, I, you know I don't disagree. He Rafael, Rafael Leao, Leao did say he was one of the toughest players you've yeah. ever come up against. Yeah. And he said oh. Rhys James was the best rapper. And that, Vinicius said the same thing. That's why I was quite high on Tonali. That's why I rated him because I went into that match. Uh, I was at the game at Stamford Bridge when Chelsea beat AC Milan and everyone was saying about Rafael Leal and I'd never watched him live and I thought, okay, he didn't really do anything but Tonali looked good. So mm. I, th I think it's a really good point for Newcastle. Does it change at all how your, what was your feeling before a ball was kicked in that Champions League group? Did you have any confidence you were getting out of it? Because a lot of people would probably see you as underdogs in that group. You know, it's a bit like... Uh... <sighs> you're getting invited to a party you didn't think you were going to be invited to like oh fuck me we're, we're going you know yeah. Um, and yeah we got like me on here we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got there <laughs> we got there and I thought we would just threaten a bit more and we were really it was backs against the wall for the majority of the game and I have to give credit because at the time I'm living and breathing every kick as you do and like I was you know I'm overly critical like what the fuck do you do that for it's the Champions League we can't be doing that but when oh! I was, oh my god it's Oh, oh my god, god. that is Madison shocking! Madison got from away Spurs. with life there. Oh, Craig, what are you saying? Arsenal are pretty too much, here. too much sloppy things coming into play. That Adogi pass, now him just Madison sitting on the ball on the edge of the box. Um, obviously Romero. Own what goal. are you doing, like, Just like what, you've what? got time. That you is, do not that have that criminal. time. He's got to score that though. Or they need a uh, yeah, but Jesus I mean, I think that need a goal. Like, I can only imagine in the stadium right now a goal up. On the back of PSV, oh my, it's and, rocking. And this is what I said in before there. the stream. I it's said rocking. the first goal was so important. This yeah. is what I said. I said, oh, we can't let Arsenal score first because it's just going to be an uphill task from now. We needed to score oh, first. Yeah, there but but Madison, of all people, who's been such key player for Spurs this season, oh, he was dithering on the ball that's, that's just uh, what in between the penalty spot and the edge ooh, of the insane. box. Insane. And you're getting dispossessed there. Insane. That is like... Insane. I don't like this. I How don't like no being one a shout down. either. Yeah. Like, scream at him. This is the biggest game of the season so far. Um, but Come then he goes up the other end and causes we got, problems. We've got to at least get into half time 1, one nil, nil down at least so he can have a talk. Because this, I don't know what's going on right now. These are. They need to fix up. He Go should get him to all shout, hell yeah, that normally works. <laughs> yeah. a, couple a, of people, yeah. a couple of people were saying that was a shocking miss <laughs> from Jesus in the chat. It what was. You, what it you was. Yeah, was, it that, was. Of course was it, it was. It was a was gift. It, was it shocking? It was a gift. He'd get away with it because yeah. he created it for himself. But if, if someone had laid that on for him, you'd be saying... Yeah, that, that is criminal. I um, think he definitely could have... I mean, he's just taken well, he off Madison. He could have let. He could have gone Could have gone closer. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have to strike it immediately. So yeah, I hear that. But he's got to at least hit the target. Yeah, for sure. Just going back to... What you were saying about Newcastle, um, I have to give credit to Kieran Trippier. That was one of the best performances I've seen for Newcastle mm. ever in my life. But surely as a Newcastle fan, being back in the Champions League, you're not sitting there. You're in the Champions League now after God knows how long. You're not sitting there dissecting every moment of the game. Surely you just enjoyed the moment. No, uh, oh, no, no, no. It's it, different to the Prem. You're just enjoying but, the but, moment. No, but We were like... 
it's a bit like we're like the whole city or the Bournemouth or the what we're in that moment where we're, we're looking out of our depth technically oh Go Spurs on. with a chance oh, good, um, good and, challenge That's and it, it was just frightening at times with the way we were giving the ball away and they were all full throttle yeah. it really put me in my place yeah. mentally where yeah. we were fighting for our lives for like 90 minutes it's, so yeah. enjoy it is a, is a bit of a weird it's just like hoping we can survive it to fight another day <laughs> um, because of people like here in Trippier oh. and the defenders I mean oh, oh for God Chelsea sake. with the chance Enzo oh. Puts it over the bar. Wait, wait, I'm actually curious. Where does Enzo play for you guys? He plays. Does he break. play as a number ten? Because he's not. <laughs> he's he has eight, been moved. He has been moved to number ten in the he's last not, few games. But it's because we've ten. we've got injuries to Nkunku and Carney. Yeah. Remember. So who's the pivot oh, behind? Oh me. Uh, you've Quite got Gallagher. Gallagher at the minute. Me, me, yeah. Gallagher. Me, me, me. Gallagher. He's Gallagher. 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 Disrespected. He's disrespected by a lot of people. Who Gallagher? But but. If I was to give my strongest Chelsea eleven, I don't believe that Gallagher makes it into that. So what I would say, what I would, what I, no, 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 but no, no, because I'm saying I think he's a good player. You get people online saying he's shit. But do you ever can't think he will be a mainstay player for your team, or do you think he's he'll go, just he's, always be a good? Mate, squad he's player? leaving in January. Oh, he's gone in January. He, he hasn't signed a new. Contract. I mean, he was wearing he a, a year and a half. When, when, day, when we he? talk about the Chelsea board, let me tell you, this is the very concerning thing, right? Obviously, we know in modern day football that the managers don't always have reign over outgoings and incomings, right? Yeah. But Chelsea were desperate to get rid of Conor Gallagher. They wanted 50 mil for him. No one would cough up the 50 mil. Actually, like Spurs at one point were going to pay you 40 odd mil for him or whatever. That's Chelsea were desperate oh, to get rid of him if they could get the fee that they, they wanted, right? And then you see, he is Pochettino's man. He has got the most minutes so far under Pochettino. He's been given the captain's armband more than anyone else in Rhys James's absence. So when you look at the fact that he's Pochettino's man, straight away then you can draw a direct line and go okay so the board and the manager aren't actually on the same same wavelength aren't on the but, same page to, to your point bringing it back to Newcastle in the Champions League once again by the way uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the best players on the pitch for me was a Chelsea lad um, Lewis Hall no. Loftus-Cheek Loftus-Cheek oh. Lo yeah didn't Lo even play Lo Loftus-Cheek again so underrated mate Honestly. absolute powerhouse <laughs> play every position so was underrated was carrying the ball forward yeah. looked an absolute monster there yeah. Yeah. We, um, are, we, were, Milan. we were idiots to let him go I couldn't, I, you I'm had him for like we, eight years he were, and never he never really ironed a place but then he it, had a really serious injury playing for Chelsea mm. in the United States that basically ruined his career like a uh, uh, career at Chelsea I should say remember Sari was playing him mm. as a number eight marauding number Right, and he looks so good on the side. Uh, inside, inside the he stadium, unbelievable. he got a oh. lot of love. A lot, a lot of love. Lot of love the sort of the thing fans where... love Loftus yeah, yeah, yeah. There's certain players, yeah. Chelsea certain players improved. that wouldn't be like perceived as well beaters, but over all the years ago in Stamford Bridge, like, oh, I know he's got a really important goal for us. Yes, but Gronkia was another one like that. Love There's it. certain players that aren't always going to give you a, a brilliant performance, but they got so much love from the but fans. He, he has that profile and I'm not saying he's anywhere near the level of a Bellingham but he has he was playing like that kind of player where he was just dominating the game and and I'm like you were in the Premier League when it when he was what, on form how the fuck is when this he was happen? putting in performances he was the Lewis and Balak he was absolutely <laughs> yeah. phenomenal in certain games but he didn't have the consistency and obviously injuries played a big part in that obviously went out on a couple of loans and never really performed to this so although I'm gutted to not have him I'm very very happy Spurs in surely going to score you've got Goal! Score. Goal! Oh! Oh! What is saved? Oh, that was right. right. That. Right How hand. is he saved? Oh that? my Ramsdale. god, Ryan! Oh, that, yeah, that was a yeah, hell of a yeah, save. Oh my god, Ryan! <laughs> Ramsdale is no, fuming Ryan, uh, that Oh my go. days that Officially dropped Officially dropped no. now Officially That dropped. was an insane save Man, Whoa, oh this is what, this, These are the things right When you look at Ten Hag Bayern on oh! And how that's going And you look at what Obviously um, Arteta has done In signing Oh my uh, heart for that one Th This is where you're proven As a manager of uh, Do your transfers work on? Oh my goodness That was a good That was a good bit of play By Spurs though just gonna give us our pro. Oh man, that was quality. You correct us. We should have scored. That, that should give you guys a lot of hope that you can still get in behind. It, it and gives make you hope. But it also sucks it away. You are so close, <laughs> and then the keeper just saves it. <laughs> and there's a lot of space down oh. that corner. It's, it's the hope that kills you, though, isn't it? You oh, know? that's a set up. I, I think that uh, I think in behind Zinchenko is is really a, a a great spot for Spurs to try and exploit because he does bomb forward at times, and that's where you got your your move there. Oh, we're going to see the goodness. replay again. That's reminiscent of the David Seaman one for Arsenal. Do you ever remember when yeah. he scooped it from Getting the goal? Stoke, oh, it, in a yeah. cup. So oh, my. Has Love anyone that. ever seen um, David Seaman's? That, oh, that, he oh needed to get more in the corner, though. Can I just say? <laughs> 
he could have put this more in the corner. Look, sure. it's like more but down the middle. Do you know what? It's curling away from because the, the ball was well, the ball I? was played a little bit behind him, so he had to scoop it <laughs> towards keep the keeper. Keep in, keep in, keep in. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> Brennan Johnson, that would have been beautiful he's way got, to... I've heard he's got very big gloves. David Seaman, uh, <laughs> David Seaman produces beautiful children, that's what I'll say. <laughs> if Brennan Johnson scores that, we'd have loved him forever. You score a, North Lo- a goal in a North London derby yeah, debut, you're that's you're how you get... Right. Wasn't oh, that Danny Rose Son scored a cracker that one oh, time? Yeah, yeah. Oh Years my ago, God, I had yeah. a few... The volley from like 30 yards out. Nah, fucking hell. That was that was mental. Oh, mate, Raya, why? Unfortunately for Spurs, right? You watch that. If you're going to get a result oh. today, that's the type of shit that needs to work out for you. Like know, you don't get many of them. They've been doing a little bit better. I'll give them that. They've yeah. managed. Take him on. Take him on. Another chance. We ain't got enough players in, in there. Uh, There's hardly any players collect. in the box, man. Like, what the hell? Oh. Uh, how's the Chelsea game going, boys? Not uh, very good. In the, the last, last 20 minutes. I'd say 20, they've been on t- uh, Villa have been on Is top of us. Is that Rhys James? Well, they're on the Modric now. running. Modric, oh, oh, just, nobody there, man. Just please get a Mudrick. striker in the box, for God's sake. Modric is looking dangerous. Please. I'll tell you what. We need to get Brower on the is, pitch. Is Brower on Saliba the bench? Saliba's celebrating. Brower's on the bench. Yeah, yeah, Brower's on the bench. Cole Palmer as well. Cole Palmer. So far, for me... Mudrick has actually job. had a good game. Good uh, Raheem Sterling on, with a cross in. It's a terrible cross. He puts it right behind the man. Fucking Sterling. Sterling <laughs> is crap. No, uh, I've got to give credit to Mudrick. I think Mudrick is having a good game exactly. here. Yeah, yeah. But we've been saying the this. The striker has mm. been shite. Mm. We've been saying this. He he honestly, in the data that he has, he's been oh. playing very, very well. He just needs a run of games and he needs a, a manager to give him confidence. He's a complete confidence player. Young guy coming into the Premier League. Did we you need see to the back clip him. and train in midweek of Mudrick hitting a weak foot shot? Oh my God. Oh. Oh, what is, long- is going on? Oh, open up. Why are so lackadaisical, up? man? Is that the right word? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And uh, luckily, Spurs have got the ball back. Um, <laughs> right. Word? I'm just making sure. <laughs> it's not something that's, I use every that's my day. That's English degree that I just ticked <laughs> off. Thanks for that. M- Mudrick, Mudrick <laughs> had a weak foot shot go in in training, and the, it was clipped up and, 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 and posted. I think the Pochettino sort of patting him on the back saying, You see what you can do? Yeah. And trying to build his confidence. So it is, even on camera, we're seeing evidence of that. Like, Poch is obviously trying to back him. But if the strike has not putting them away, what, what more can he do? Oh, really? on press. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, oh. <gasps> chance for Spurs! Oh, come oh, on, you've got to score, score these. He's got, what is Johnson doing? I'm Craig, you're tearing your hair out. I know, here, I know. Come these on. are too good. Of, oh, you should have done Madison, oh. Madison with another chance. Good crossing! Oh. Yeah. Let's go! Go! Let's go! <laughs> Mate! It was coming, though. It Bro, was coming. It had been coming. Oh. About three times. Mm. So this has been well earned from Son. I know, wait, VAR, I'm not, I'm not doing anything until... It's in off the post. I'm reserving oh. my, my celebrations there's, there's until no I don't... We've got to give yeah, credit to James Madison, who <coughs> never gave up there, because he was getting kicked about, and he just kept it, kept they, it alive. By the way, they don't give our away fans, us particularly, I've noticed, a lot of seats in the North London Derby. Oh, yeah. It's quite fuckery. Mm. Man. I can't lie. I mean, rightfully so, so, I've right never seen so. Craig like this. I've never oh, seen God. you like this before, lad. This is fucking... No, do you know what it is? It's an annoying <coughs> one because it's such a good one for them going into the half. He's got to score this, though. Uh, uh, did Rhea? Oh, well, did he nah, make a mistake there or no? Nah? nah, that was a tough save. I think really. Madison got lucky off the Check deflection this out. over here. James Madison it. keeps it alive. This is why he should have signed he's him. Turned Saka. Saka too easily turned, maybe. That is uh, a it's great goal. That is great quality goal. from Madison. It was a good finish by Son as well. Great finish by Son. They're looking by far the more dangerous team in this second half. Mate, they're potent. And if you look at Son, he's between three different defenders and he still manages to get the touch on it. That is world class. He always does that though. He's had these... Yes! Gets it! Chelsea have scored! Oh, no! 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 No, but VAR don't like, come on. (laughs) I'm so sorry, Josh. Can we get a half-time whistle now? That was too funny. That was funny. <sighs> God bless you. Come God, on. This is how excited I get about goals now because we just don't see him that often. Mate. Oh, oh that... he's well on. No, I don't, I don't think he is offside. He, he is. It. No, he's, no, yeah. he's, he's quite far off. Yeah. yeah. Good header. Good header. Great header. Good finish. Good finish. He actually has the fourth most XG out of our entire team, De Sassi, and he's a, and he's a centre back. Just saying. I gotta love it. Yeah. It's been a good game though, guys, hasn't it? North London derby. Come on, it's been a good. To be honest, half, I eh? think I think Arsenal should look a little bit concerned mm. with how 
Spurs have responded to going a goal down. Craig said at the start of the match, if 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 Arsenal score first, he's worried that the heads would drop. Why? Because probably because what you've been used to for the last few seasons. But that's not what's happening under Ange. And it's also because we're away from home at the Emirates. Yeah. It's like you don't want to go one nil down there. They're they're a very good but team. You've played just as good as they have in this game and created some and it it swung as well. It's not just yeah, been yeah. like you've nicked the goal. It had been coming, like you said, there's been and three we've good made chances. loads of mistakes as well. Yeah. That we probably should have got punished for. Yeah, no, for know, sure, honestly like watching it as an Arsenal fan it's probably fair going in at 1-1 into the half yeah. it's not ideal for us at all but do you know what I have to admit it's, it's painful for me to do so but having the ability to watch both games side by side right now both teams in this London derby are a class above Chelsea at the minute, but it? how are we this is what Agreed. I'm saying how are we now here in like six games of football under this manager. Yeah. Like obviously Arteta's mm -hmm. built something he there. He deserves so like, much I don't credit. know how he's done it this yeah, quickly. Yeah. It's very hard to uh, turn things around. Watching the games though, like what <laughs> has changed from last season? Like why has he um, like moved things around? I just think it's, it's belief, man. I think he's just like managed to tap into the player's belief. Obviously he's got his tactics. He plays inverted fullbacks. He likes to play possession football and he has a philosophy, but I just think there's belief there. And I think Harry Kane going, you know, Everyone kind of wrote us off, but this was an opportunity for players to step up. And I think players have. Oh, it, it, It's strange because this sort of uh, change in a team, it, it shows you how bad things were under previous yeah. managers. I can only compare it to Steve Bruce versus yeah. Eddie Howe, where Eddie Howe, yeah, he signed a few players, but I, it, that took a while for them to come in. He, he, he didn't sign that many to start off with. You see in players like Joe Linton, like Al Myron, like, you know, many different, like Fabian Shaw, who wasn't even getting a game under Steve Bruce, just look like completely different humans. Yellow cards. And yeah, confidence is everything. Yeah. And a bit of love and a bit of belief uh, from a manager can change a player so much. And we're seeing this happen now with yellow. Ange. It's, love it's, it. He gave both of them a yellow. He gave oh, Basuma yellow for Argo. Oh, both mate, are, this, both are holding midfielders are on a yellow now. He's not good, is it? Just for shouting at the ref. Not good. For, for the... For, for this challenge. This was a yellow. This was a yellow from Pape Sarch. Just grabs him, look, just grabs him, cool. Just want to say that West Ham for have equalised Bowen against Liverpool. Yes! 1-1. One, one. As have Brighton Gerard, that's Bournemouth. my guy, man. Gerard Bowen, Ooh. love him. Can I tell you one thing I would, one criticism I would level at Ange, and I don't know what, I know we had a conversation about this before, but it, I, look, I haven't got a horse in the race. I shouldn't even care. But the way you went out of the cup, like, you needed to be prioritising that. Like, I think that's a realistic chance for silverware. And although you can say the presence of Man City there, I do understand that. But also, there was the presence of Man City in the Champions League when you got to the final and you managed to beat them. I think in the cup, Spurs should have tried to go strong. No European competition. I'm going on uh, Wednesday night for... Chelsea against Brighton at Stamford Bridge and I would very very much want to see a full strength lineup in that competition because I think that silverware is silverware you've got to prioritize I agree, sort of I agree but Joey I've, I've made peace with that I was tearing my hair out for a yeah. week about that I've, <laughs> I've made peace with it I don't want to open new old wounds I feel you just do you know what I mean? Yeah. We just got. I'm looking at the silver lining now. There's one less competition we've just got the Premier League and FA Cup everyone else is in Europe and in loads of cups let's just focus on the league then and do what we can do Finish as high as we can. Ultimately, it's that feel good factor, isn't it? Because even just being here, sitting next to a Spurs fan, you know, obviously you can just tell how excited they are. They've just gotten that feel good factor. Yeah. And again, touching on what you were saying, it's like they had these like managers just absolutely getting onto their players, these big managers. They've now, he's brought that feel good factor back for you guys. Mm. He's just such a likable guy. Again, question, question mark over it is, is he going to keep it going? But I mean, so far they're doing well, credit to him, but. We'll see if you can keep it going in the long run is the big question. This is a test right now. Like I'm, I'm happy. At the moment, it looks like we're doing okay in this test. You know, it's far from over. Arsenal could still go on and win this and they could win it heavily. Who knows? But the fact that we've come to Emirates, I haven't seen us come to Emirates and try and play like this in a while. Usually it's just counter, counter, hope for a Harry Kane penalty. The Harry Kane penalty comes. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's usually what we do. Like that man so makes true, me man. so mad. That Harry Kane he's hat trick, wait, he's hat -trick though, <clears throat> yesterday. Oh, he's yeah. getting crazy. And two assists. He's going crazy. Are you still happy for him? I'm always happy for him. <laughs> I, I'm, but I mean, it's my second team now. I yeah, all their I game. know, I know. I, I, what? Ballon d'Or. <laughs> Ballon d'Or pending. Simple. If he wins nah. the Champions League with them and breaks and, and, and gets top goal scoring hey, in, in Bundesliga, Messi wins it. Messi what, in, into Miami? Harland. No, no, we're talking Harland. about the next one. He's oh, talking the about the next one. one yeah. No, but what if Bayern win the Champions League? Yeah. Haaland's surely got to be up there, right? If it's they sure. don't win the Champions yeah, League and Bayern yeah, win yeah, it, though. True, true. 
Just to uh, break down the uh, half times here, we're going to go um, on to Chelsea, Aston Villa. Shots, Chelsea have had three, yeah. but Aston Villa has five. Uh, two on target for Chelsea, three on target for Villa, 55% possession to 45%. Wait, hold on, do you say Villa's got more shots on Villa target? Villa have more shots, five, five to three. They've been knocking on the door big time. Um, so, yeah, it's. Uh, look, the win probability here is is in favour of Chelsea, according to Google. Don't know what that you know what whether that makes a fucking difference. But mm. uh, do owned, you, by, owned by Bowley, apparently. Do you do you still think that? Uh, <laughs> you swear, you swear. <laughs> uh, sorry, just uh, just to refresh, uh, Joey. We're doing uh, we're doing the stats. Five shots to three in favour of Villa. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in the second half, what would you change? I have, I have to say, like having watched it though, like um, Villa had the last twenty minutes or so, they've been knocking on the door. They had quite a few chances. Sanchez has made some good saves, right? But we've also had a lot of like we had the offside goal. Fair enough. I nearly lost my head. I probably did lose my head a little bit. But we also had uh, a couple of crosses there for Mudrick. Like we've had chances to to score. Fair enough. They haven't been slotted away. But I think overall, if you look at it, like it's been fairly even, it's, and yeah. we've had a lot of chances to to score. So when you're saying like, what would you change, like? I would just want to see Mudrick get on the ball a bit more, Sterling get on the ball a bit more. And then Jackson, I want him to just be in the penalty area to, to tap these home. And also the X factor here that we've got to bring on is Broyer off the bench. And I think Broyer coming off the bench could be... I mean, what more? Do, what, what does he have to do? I mean, If like, I'm uh, Pochettino right now, I know he won't do this, but at halftime, <laughs> I'm getting Cole Palmer and Broyer ready. I think we take Nicholas Jackson off for the time being. I know, well, not for the time being, he's going to be off for the whole match, but we take him <laughs> off because, <laughs> still 10 minutes over here. <laughs> Just have yourself a little rest. A little shoulder massage. Um, no, I think we take him off. I think we put Broer on. Obviously, Broer's coming back from a really bad injury. And again, it, I, I understand that people will level at me. God, that shows where Chelsea are, that you're back in a player that's only ever scored one goal for you and you're hanging your hopes on him. But we are where we are. I'm sick and tired of people going to me, well, that says it all. We know. We're shit. Okay? The table, <laughs> the table Fair shows enough. it. We're had six a... games into the season, right? <laughs> and the optimism from this guy is just draining <laughs> out of them by the day. Isn't crazy after spending <laughs> so like... much? You're still yeah. just shit. Well, yeah. this, this comes back to sort of what we were saying about Chelsea a week ago about... Who do they hang their hat on? They're heavily linked now with Ivan Tony. Makes sense. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. Yeah. So I think yeah. I've, I think Ivan Tony's a no-brainer. I think that that's you know there's certain transfers in football that I go, they're a guarantee. They're a sure it's thing. Happening. Surely Ivan Tony comes in and scores goals for us. He will come in and bang goals for us, and I'm sure of that. And I've always said I've been saying this for a long, long time. Since he was at Peterborough, I wouldn't really, but I've been saying it for a long <laughs> this time. Is a that Newcastle. He, that, that, yeah, that he is the sort of fit that I do think could come in, do a really good job for us. In terms of this match, I'm not the most confident because I've seen us play really good football already. We actually played really well against West Ham and got beat 3-1. Do you know what I mean? If you're taking away the goals and you're going on the run of play. So I've seen us play good football already. Um, I'm not ultimately really, really confident right now that we're going to go on and win the match. But we're not outclassed. You know, our keeper's kept us in it a couple of times. There's room for optimism. And as I say, I'm bringing it back now to this. We are where we are. You can't, you, you can, you can say what you want to me, but we can't just always level at me. Well, you spent a billion. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But we are where we are. You know so the Jackson at the minute, thing? Yeah. I'm really interested to see how much longer the fans have hope for him. Like, obviously he's on a contract. He ain't going anywhere and he will be in and around the squad. But you know how, like, as fans, we just make our minds up and we're like, nah, it ain't happening. What is that breaking like, point? Uh, how many more games do we watch him get one on? Because that one-on-one, -on -one, you talk about Ivan Tony, he scores that, yeah. guaranteed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how many more games is there hope left for a kid like him? Like, how old is he? 22? 22? He's young. young, yeah. He's young, yeah. Young, yeah. Like early he 20s, actually, He sure. actually, and, and Josh made this point before, he actually played out wide a lot of the time for Villarreal. Makes sense. Um, so, possibly, we might see a position change. We might see him come into it a little bit. One thing is, we were p very persistent, and it might have been through lack of personnel or having the bodies in to be able to play anyone, but but we were very persistent in playing Kai Havertz in that number nine role. And we all know it didn't really work. At the moment, as much as I've bantered him, I think if some of these opportunities had fallen to Kai Havertz, he would have been a little bit more clinical. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no,
the way that he's persistent in getting into these positions, making these runs even when he's not being found and not having his head down is very, very good. And you would. Does it remind you of the Nunes situation at Liverpool a little bit last season? Constantly trying, getting yeah, into the positions, yeah. runs quick, makes good runs, but just can't finish it mm. at the death. It is, it is. Um, <coughs> listen, I think that. All we can do is hope that Brower comes back in and does a good job and hits the ground running when he comes back. And Cuckoo as well. And Cuckoo's going to be a massive. That's going to be a the link up. Is he out for the whole season? No, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no January. 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 ACL, January. No, no, January. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Still but also, what you've got to remember in pre season, those two boys. No, no, but together, they really yeah. they, they bossed it. So, like, I, I do think we're missing players that unlock Jackson as opposed to saying, like, Jackson isn't the guy. I think it's more like we need players in and around him, getting the balls in, getting the access to him so that he can then play the one touch. Like for me, when we were at our best in pre-season, it was one touch. We were playing against Brighton. We were picking the ball up. Mudrick would put, pick the ball up. Then he'd go off Jackson. Then it would go back to Mudrick and then we'd score. We're not really seeing that sort of like link-up play in the same way. So like I, I do think is it's very easy to say Jackson isn't the guy, like he needs to be taken out of the team. I honestly don't think it's as simple as that. I think it's get Jackson in the right areas, get the best ball to him and then he's going to start converting. But Breuer's a good player as well. And I he is. genuinely Very like And this Breuer. is this is I why do. we like it because he's going to put pressure on oh. Jackson now and he like Jackson's going to have to <laughs> up his game. <laughs> no, I'm just laughing at the idea of Jackson has one goal in six games for Chelsea this season. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're talking like a superstar. Sure. No, no, but like it, you're the Chelsea striker so and for it's it's a little bit like playing for Man United playing for Chelsea like the pressure's on from the get go. So um uh, my point being, when I said how many more games does he have, I feel like he has another two games before Chelsea fans, in their minds, will kind of just go... Well, especially now Bro is back. Yeah. Now, now, now Bro is back. When he got a little run in the team, I get that numbers-wise, you might not uh, straight away say, oh, well, he lit the world up, and I get that. But as a fan who was in attendance a lot of the time... Broa was one that was really giving me a lot of optimism. Mentality-wise, you know, he, he, he's the Albanian nightmare for a reason. <laughs> Mentality-wise, very, very good. Chasing down every single ball. Doing the things that, if you take away the obvious and clear thing that you need to be scoring goals, if you take that away and say, okay, what do I want to see from a number nine? He definitely fits the profile of what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's coming back from a really bad injury. Mm. And, and players, is, players more established. Lukaku, this, Lukaku this, would have more goals. This, this is the thing, though, right? When <laughs> yeah, you're, I'll, I'll come back to that because that's... That's a very good point, a very interesting point that you've made. But just to say, right, like Broly is not going to be in the team straight away. He's coming from a serious injury. So to say that Jackson's going to get dropped, he, like quite frankly, he's just not. Like he's going to play up until January. Jackson will play the majority of the games. And, and it's regardless of what happens mm. because Broly isn't going to be rushed back into the team. We don't have another, uh, we have uh, David Washington, you know, an 18 year old kid as our third choice. So like, quite frankly, he's going to play isn't that anyway. After spending all that money, that's still, those are still your options up front. Because I hear what you're saying, you can just turn around and tell people we're shit, but you've actually been good for a while and you've had your chest up for a while. So when you are now shit, people are going to be reminding you it's that not you saying, are shit. It's not saying like we're, as a club, just done, we're shit, it's over. It's just like the performances haven't been up to scratch and we're not converting the chance we need to do. If you look at the data, we should have been five goals better off than we are right now this, at this point of the season, looking at the XG, right? Which puts us in fourth place in the league. So like, to say that we've been shit I don't think it like tells the full picture here about our performances and it, a lot of the journalists like Michael Cox did an article recently where he was sort of going the data behind us is good and eventually if you keep going in the way we're going we're going to come it, good eventually this was a long term project and I think Chelsea fans understand that it, it's going to be that it's just that they didn't expect to be quite as off it as what yeah. they are now talking about the Lukaku thing uh, two goals in three games this season mm. uh, why why not why no, not him Do you no know? chance just, just no toxic chance. person he wanted to leave if like, you think about it like this it's like you're in a relationship the girlfriend cheats on you. I don't care how good the sex is. It always I'm comes not up, getting back. It always comes back to sex. That's it what it does, is. It always I'm comes back to the girlfriend. Love those sex is. analogies, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what position are <laughs> <I> playing? <laughs> um, Dog it. <laughs> 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 oh, Chelsea uh, sound like they're the ones getting doggy right now every <laughs> game honestly I, I, I'm only interested because if look if they don't win the day and it is a draw it's just another game where it's one point a game on, on average which yeah. you know that's relegation form yeah, for sure um, which is why I'm more interested is it, it starts becoming more serious because of what we we spoke about earlier in the in the show where we look at the season starting from January 1st this year and see that Chelsea would be 16th and 
you you expect that to change for like for sure, and you expect a couple of players to score and things to start turning. But if it doesn't, Chelsea's fuck me. Chelsea's league fixtures after this game. So obviously we've got Fulham. That's a Monday night game. It's a game. Yeah, it's away from home. You would think that we could beat Fulham, but if we don't pick up points today, it looks less and less likely. Then we go on a run. We've actually got Burnley away again, so I, I would I would hope that we can go there and get some points. But then we go on a run in October. We've got Arsenal, mm. then Brentford, then Spurs then City, then Newcastle, <coughs> then Brighton, then Man United, and it doesn't stop until we then play Everton and we've got a few... That's the hardest one of the so season. So that's the problem for you guys, is you were supposed to have had your points back now before all that happens. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's going to have to improve and then some to actually pick up points. If you're in the top four, though, you need to be getting points out of some of those games anyway. So like we're in the position we're in. We should have won some of the games, but if we're not being team, if we're not getting a decent amount of points out of that, then we're not going to be anywhere near the top four anyway. My question for you guys as Chelsea fans is how bad does it need to get before it's Pochettino out? Like genuinely, how bad does it need According to According to Twitter, he's, uh, there's already a lot of <laughs> hashtags going Let, on. Let's say we're 20 games in. What does he need to do to have been sacked? If you're 15th, 20 games in. I just got... think there, there isn't a solution where like making a change at the managerial... So no matter like, how bad he's doing... He's just not going. But like, what's what? Who's going to come in and it's be just better? like Ten Hag? It's like we've we've, we've tried this before. Up. So I think yeah. the fans are resigned to. We just need to see this out now and see where we end up because progress isn't. If we're twenty game, if we're twenty games in and we're fifteenth in the league, of course there's going to be a lot of fans that are getting very loud in their opinion that Pochettino is not the right man. But I think that anyone who's followed the club has the sort of insight that maybe a Chelsea fan like myself and Josh do can understand that. The manager's important, but it's it's a drop in the ocean in the bigger picture of what's going on at the minute. And I actually believe that, okay, Pochettino's had a little bit of time, a little bit of time in pre-season to bed players in and whatnot. But if we did finish 10th this season, it's obviously a massive failure. I've said it time and time again. Is it so much of a failure that the manager needs to go? When I look at what's out there at the minute, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of looking and scratching my head and thinking, well, it's just as much of a gamble. I think he's took the Germany job now, but I mentioned Nagelsmann before, we were in for him before. If we went and got him, it's just as much of a gamble. Mm. If we had got Luis Enrique coming in, it would have been just as much as a gamble, you know? And do you know the, the problem with criticising Chelsea managers in the past has been, oh, well, you're, you're, you're dealing with players who've won Champions League, who've finished in this po position, you know, they've constantly, like, I look out there and you're like, how many of these players are established in any way, the, shape, or form? The, the key any. thing, the key thing, the key word here is stability. Like we have ripped up everything, every system of the club, every um, team <clears> in the club, the players, the manager, the coaching staff, everything. So to say now, oh, go and go and sack the manager. That's like the that's like the yeah, worst thing we can. Everything's do. new at that club, and yeah. even when you look at the players. How many senior players are in that squad that are like been at Chelsea for a long time now? Yeah. Who? Asper Laqueta's gone. Who yeah. is there? No, no. The senior no. players are like got Silva. Sterling and Thiago Silva. No, the ones but that aren't there aren't on the pitch. Chalaba's not on the pitch, obviously. But, uh, He's no, but I'm, I'm talking about Bruce senior, Jones. older, experienced footballers. So like Sterling's getting older now. Thiago Silva's obviously, oh, he's ancient. But they ain't even been at Chelsea for that but long. They're not like someone that has like the DNA in, in yeah. them, Chelsea yeah. DNA. So who do you have? Gallagher you have is young the players. captain. Gallagher is the captain, and that tells you everything yeah. you need to know. Like back in the day, we'd have had John Terry, we'd have had Lampard, Drogba, Peter there Jack, you go. All of them are captains, right? And now, no disrespect to Conor Gallagher, but he's the captain. So now you've got him, you. Rhys James, and these yeah, are young yeah. players. Having even John Mount's Terry gone. as an assistant manager would have been a fucking good idea. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Start, that we we were saying that. We were yeah. saying it's down to you, Mike Chelsea, to change your expectations, though. It's to completely. Completely change your expectations. But if you're yeah. getting results, so I would let him. Winning. Yeah. You guys have been so used to just Question. winning, so you're just changing everything. Question now. for Arsenal uh, in Spurs. So <laughs> what are we saying for the second half? Is there any major changes that you'd want to see in your teams? I wouldn't say there's any major changes right now. I do think that beginning of the game, it was kind of equal. And then we started growing into the game. Just before we got our goal, we started growing mm -hmm. into it. But then these lot, credit to them, they did react well for me, which mm -hmm. is that's the biggest concern right now. The atmosphere has been going crazy since the beginning. We've scored our goal. They should be on the back foot now. But it's not like they just got their goal on the back of nothing. They've actually been playing well and probably deserve that goal as much as it mm. pains me to say it. I think we've got to come out in this half and just, we've got to create more chances. Mm. That's I, the problem I, I, for me. Are you worried about the legs in terms of the Champions League effect and maybe... I think it's too early in the season. <laughs> uh. It's quite early in the season. So no, I, I, I wouldn't say. And we've got some decent options to come off the bench as well. It's a shame we don't have Martinelli or Trossard there, but... 
I'm, I am still confident going into the second half that we can get a goal. I am still I confident think, for I, sure. I think for us, the thing I'm concerned about is just like our two holding midfielders are both on a yellow each mm. and they've got to break up the play. And then Udogi's on a yellow as well. I think as the game goes on, we might have to bring on Hoybier or just someone else, another you know central midfielder that can maybe take off. And it, that pains me because I like those two together, Basuma and Saar. But I think Hoybier might have to come in at some stage and kind of take the pressure off because I don't like having this many players on a yellow card. And these mistakes in the second half can't happen because Arsenal will punish us yeah. if we keep giving them these kind of opportunities. But interestingly, and I showed him... Down. Because he said before the game, oh, you're yeah, going to come and you're not going to dominate possession. I looked at the possession stats. We, we both, had 60%. We both agreed and believed that. And that also at 40%. Case, so fair enough, I hear you. I hear you. No, we both... Nah, come on. We both did we both think... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Oh, it's a great uh, save from Red. I just didn't want to look crazy. Well, before we kick off for the second <laughs> half, we just have to remind the good folks at home, we've got to pay the bills. Yeah, we got a great new sponsor on the kickoff called Fair Play that allows you to bet against your mates. Me and Josh are using it today. We got a bet on. I went Arsenal. He went Spurs. Uh, we're still uh, we're at 1-1, one, one, mate. I'm feeling a bit confident. How are you feeling with the bet? Um, I, I, feel, I feel like I could win I this feel like bet quite easily, actually. Oh, I feel like it's a 50-50. I, I, like I, I feel like I win it with Spurs and a draw. I'm feeling confident have, about it. Kai Havertz is coming on. Wow. I don't know what the and fuck And is that, that Jorginho? Is. Kai wow. Havertz and um, Jorginho. I have, to, I have to just say to everyone, if you do want to use Fair Play, download it today. Make sure you use uh, the promo code TKO what that will allow you to do is get a five pound free bet to oh, pay against your mates and remember like it's all fun like it's not a bookies there's no commission involved at all so if you put in five quid you know and you win it out against your mate you get a tenner for you know and, and this is how you settle the WhatsApp debate with the exactly. lads where you put your money where your mouth is it's really easy the link is in the description below and if you support the kickoff this is a great way to support us because they are literally helping us bring you the content that you love shout out to Fair Play great guys and a really great idea because it's it's not one of those where you're going to get you know sucked into uh, betting too much or too often it's just for a bit of fun with the lads and that's why me and Joshua just took a tenner on it each so it's gambling responsibly because we're in control mm. yeah, exactly so yeah make sure you use that code TKO Rice. for the free uh, five pound bet. Do you know what Sorry. I love about the concept of it? How often I've said to my mate, "Go on, then we'll have a bet on it." Exactly. We shake hands on it and never deliver. Disappears. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know I'm talking. I'm about always that, that guy. Yeah. I'm always that guy. And Brian's like, this... "Let's slap a tenner on it." And I'm like, "Sorry, Brian, don't have any cash." Well, the, great, the great thing about it is we can use it for the fighting. Come on, oh, come on. Come Chelsea. On. Yeah. Oh, and he's he's missed it again. It's Jackson with a header wide. Free header in the box. He's going to get a lot of opportunities. He, you know, he should be in the team. You know, let's let's keep him there. <laughs> oh my God, you're just so freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you sound like a counsellor, not a fucking. Uh, I don't think I need some counsellor. Um, oh, they're giving offside. He was well onside. Uh, but the the point be about uh, fair play uh, again, front, just to mate. finish off, is um, what I love about it, especially is fighting. I'm always talking about fighting, so you can bet on the fighting as well uh, with your mates. Put on um, a boxing like there was loads of boxing on last night. We could have an accumulator mm. against each other. Who does better yeah. um, with my predictions? So we, we could even bet weird. about how many times you slag off Ten Hag in this, which Literally, could be quite a lot. <laughs> anything you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know Ten Hag's become my new Ollie of like when he wins a game but barely scrapes it? I'm like, yes, keep him there. <laughs> Keep him there. He's turning into the new Ollie. Yeah. Um, and I know Man United fans will hate that, but on. I do think it's come on. true. Come on. Oh, Chelsea come on. through. That was a good cross by uh, Sterling, Chelsea's but nobody was starting there. Starting off oh, lively here. Wow. Starting off very lively, Chelsea. Yeah. But yeah, big shout out Second to Fair Play. Half. Thanks very much for sponsoring the stream. And make sure you use that code TKO. For five I want to talk about uh, Jesse Lingard, uh, lads, because, mm. uh, be, you know, going back to last season, he took the big pay uh, for Nottingham Forest, did not deliver. And he had a, 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 it was an option of a one year contract with Nottingham Forest for 200 grand a week, or he could have taken a long term deal at West Ham and Newcastle, um, in which obviously Newcastle broke top four. Uh, West Ham obviously won a trophy. So they, and he chose the money instead. And there was a question of was that going to be a situation where the contract runs out it doesn't work out for him and then he eventually ends up in no man's land that's kind of what's happened uh, he was training with West Ham using their facilities probably free of charge you'd think and um, no one came in for him it turns out Steven Gerrard has given him a lifeline now in Saudi um, but not even a contract he's given him a chance to prove himself in Saudi so it's not even like it, it's like you're in a going back to being an apprentice in the Saudi league, and it's you know a, a league that we would have thought Lingard should be able to rip it up in. What do we make of where he finds himself now in his career? I think 
a really, really bad decision in not either taking up the Newcastle move or the West Ham move. It's, it's not similar because he's not a free agent, but it's like what I was saying about Harry Maguire. Like, I don't get why you haven't taken that move. And for Jesse Lingard to not take either of those clubs, and actually, originally, do you know what he was doing? He was actually backing himself by taking the Nottingham Forest move because obviously it was a shorter contract. And what he thought was because there won't be a transfer fee, he'll go there, light it up, and then he'll get a lot more on the wages. And it's just mad how these things can work because ultimately that's come back to shoot him in the foot because he wasn't pulling up any trees at Forest, was he? He was actually not playing mm. a lot of the time. Yeah. And, and when you compare the contracts, he probably would have been offered, let's say, Newcastle and West Ham, probably 100 grand a week to play for three years, maybe four, I don't know. Pro uh, two minimum, but it would have been a three-year deal, I would assume, to then only get one year at Forest for 200 grand and now to find himself potentially... I mean, let's just say the Saudi move doesn't go well. Mm. I mean, what you're sitting in a fucking road with for Eden Hazard and David De Gea, just you know. What, is he, what, would he what, retire? Would he retire? Well, I mean, if you, <gasps> if, you, if you ain't got a club, then you're retired, aren't you? you, you you're sitting with Danny Rose somewhere. <laughs> Saying, you right, mate? I tell what, what you what, that weekend? will be one heck of a trial for him. I mm. think if he doesn't go crazy in that trial, then yeah, surely you're done. Because the amount of money that's going to be offered on the table for him in that Saudi deal is going to be ridiculous. Mm. He does sign, so... I just think it's mad that, like... Yeah. And obviously, I know Jesse really well, so I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible and not try and be biased. But I just do think it's a bit mad that he can't just get a club like he's still good enough to play for a lot of these he's still a Premier League quality he's, he's, player he's talented but I yeah. think the question about him is all, is is now about what are you about or as like a footballer commitment or uh, yeah, work well, because, ethic or... Uh, because if you look at footballers who opt to not get that move away like uh, Maguire has uh, there's an impression that football fans get about him is he is more about the money than he is about his game mm. and I think that that's something that's uh, an opinion that's been oh <laughs> chance for Arsenal oh, 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 that, is, that is on the shirt line that, that, that is on, of all. yeah Shop back in. I honestly yeah. think that could be given you know because okay, we'll it was on the shirt on VAR. It was, if it's Romero it was, again I'm going home seriously this guy he can't shake these things out of his game out. What we're saying, lads? Turns. Oh, oh it's a handball. Chelsea, go on, go on. It's a penalty. Oh, my days. Why do we even... Why is it a penalty? It's a penalty. Surely it's one of them ones where this it's, is it's a not giving us... How the, the fuck lads, do you lads, go you through you just clean on your goal? Attention. Oh, and it's another offside for Chelsea. <laughs> it's deep it's deep another right. offside. <laughs> Mate, you can't go through on it's goal penalty, and man. not. Come on, oh, no. this is a penalty, guys. This is of course it's a easy penalty. penalty. There's no way easy. They're penalty. not going to give this it's, one. It's, it's a stone wall yeah. penalty. Like his hand is in the air. Bro. Is he? Is he on a booking, guys? Can we just see? Can we just see Raheem Sterling here in the top corner, lads? Oh, uh, he didn't feed him he misses in. a one-on-one -on -one again. This that, is that might have actually been on side. This is why I've been saying that Martinez is the best goalkeeper in that the world. I've been saying it for years. Are we praising years. the Villa keeper for you missing one-on-one -on -ones, lads? Is that what <laughs> we, we should have signed? Him. You know what? We should have signed. Even him. a joke. I was actually considering because I think he's a very good keeper, not best in the world, but he's a very good. He's brilliant. He is Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, Newcastle scored five against them earlier this season. We were looking at him. Put that out there. Yeah, go on. But no, going back to the Lingard thing. Sorry, guys, while we're figuring out this penalty. My, my question is is for certain players the question becomes about desire and I think that that's just with, with Lingard's had a good career but when he opted for Forrest I think there was just an opinion about him formed at that point of you want the quick money now and it, it's kind of bitten him in the arse do we think that he'll even get the contract in Saudi? We, we don't know Lingard from a personal aspect obviously I know Craig does but I would just be literally guessing right but there is a bit of a common denominator here when you look at the players that are out of contract. You know, Eden Hazard, Jesse Lingard. They are the sort of players that maybe from the outside, albeit we don't know as well as people that may know them, they do come across as the sort of players that are a bit nonchalant with things, are a bit, you know, not maybe willing to put the work in. You look at Jesse Lingard's 30 years old. Ashley Young is still getting runs out in the Premier League at 38 years old. And you look, then, then you'll look at things and you'll go, okay, well, could attitude play a real key part into why some of these players aren't I, getting I, I think that there, there's, there's, there's talk of that. We're going to find out about this penalty now. Oh, surely. It's, it's yeah. He's given it. Yeah. yeah he's given I, it. No, but you know, it's crazy. How does it take them so... How does he no, still do you know what? Do you know, can I say something? Just, sorry, just Come watching on, that back, I think they were thinking because like what's happened is he struck the ball, Madison's made a challenge and it's kind of like deflected up and it's a short 
distance. You know when they talk about the distance to kind of move it? Uh, it's still a pen. They yeah, talk about yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they're thinking yeah. like, oh, we have to make sure. No, but honestly, it's a pen though. Even if it was against Arsenal, I'd be saying straight away, cool, that's a pen. As mm. much as it would hurt me. Like, oh, I don't know, man. That's but just... Romero, an own goal and a penalty. You've had a stinker, an absolute yeah. stinker. But it's interesting, mate, because a lot of people were saying that Romero's back. Like, he wasn't getting the yellow he's card. He's played well this season. Yeah, but yeah. he's still... The problem. My yeah. problem with Romero is he's always had these little things in his game. Very aggressive, oh, but over the line. Like and now things, it's just things like, like this don't get forgotten. Who, things like this don't get forgotten. It's just a high in the North London derby. You give an own goal yeah. and a penalty away. I mean, you can't do both of those in a They derby. haven't even scored a you know, proper I can't goal like in, in in his defence. The own goal, look, listen, it happens, and even a penalty. It's not like it was intentional. Or both in it. Like, is it the same player? Yeah. Right. Does, does, does he score? It's Saka. Yes. Of he come does. on. Back in the day. Back in. Definitely putting it. Come on. Pressure's on. Smart boy, right there. Slap it. Slap it. Come on. Down the middle. Two one. Oh, I love it. My oh. guy, man. Oh, my goodness. Real star boy right there, man. Come Both on. Both goals today, technically. Oh. This, ain't, this ain't the Arsenal that came out against PSV. I yeah, love it. Blown away. I love stuff, it. Man. This, this is hey, listen, hey, we get them three points. Just, just you know what it is, though? Here. It's another question asked of Spurs, though, now. And look, there's plenty yeah, of the game left to play. What we've seen in the in, in the last goal is Spurs oh, reacted well. Fuck Will they do it again? Fuck off. And Declan Sorry. Rice. But why, when we're, at a, when we're at a level playing field, at a neutral base, are we just giving them these sorts of things? <laughs> Melo I've Gusto. I've just asked the question, and all I can hear is Joey going, fuck off. <laughs> what, what's happening, Joey? Melo Gusto goes in for a challenge, wins the ball, a nothing wrong with it. Oh, Great that's tackle. a red. They've no, gone no, no, over. He's won the ball. They've Look gone the over to the monitor. He's booked him already, and they're now oh, going to turn it into a red card. He's, he's literally got the ball first. Is it, is it because he's left the ground, though? Yeah, but he's got the ball first. Like, So what's the rule, guys? You, uh, if you go for the ball and then someone the slaps it, I need to see it's the whole He gets the ball first we're, we're not seeing it on full screen we're literally yeah, watching the ref behind it. the ref scene. Don't do it. The, the worry is is dangerous play when you leave the ground I'm not saying that's what's happening but come there's on there's no consistency though this this is how, what is the defender meant to do in this position right he goes to win the ball the Definitely guy kicks right. his leg what are you meant to do they're going to give him a red card it's an agenda definite pen Moment. Romero knows it. No. Look at his face. He's looking at it. He's thinking about it now, even now. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, you're in here. Two Spurs on two. are in here. Spurs. Madison. Oh, two on two. It's on. on. Madison, the son of Goal! Goal! Oh, and Spurs are Let's go. On Let's go. Character. Woo! Character. Chill. And by the way, all our, all our goals have come from open play. Good bits of passing. I'm just saying. Stop though. it. That was good bits I'm of just passing. Say, I'm just saying. That was though. Good, yeah, it, it was, was a good ball in by Madison. It was. It was. Stop it was. It. Was he threaded what was it? it? He, he took it off it. on a 2v1 now. Right, and yours was a pen and an own goal. I hear you. So I hear you. But don't yeah. be telling me and good bits of play. It was. What about the first goal? What about the first goal? I missed that top ball. I would appreciate that, mate. That's 2v2. Isn't it? Top ball is 1v1. It's close. We've got a red card for Chelsea. Oh, who, who my got a red day. card? Who was it? Gusto. Gusto. Yeah, Gusto. It was honestly, guys, when you see this, you watch it. Wrong. He's won the ball and the and then the attacker follows through and hits him. It's but just, you know what's insane is Declan Rice right. comes on, Jorginho has come on to replace him, and then he does that fucking shit. Jesus Christ. I have oh, to say, oh my goodness. I have to say, I I was oh very goodness. happy when Jorginho left and uh, Good finish. And that isn't helping. Mm -hmm. What is he doing there? Oh, that is so what? stupid, So basically, man. Jorginho has the ball in the middle of the pitch. He gets oh, so dispossessed. Stupid, man. Madison oh, passes it through. Oh. Easy finish for Son. Why have you taken off Declan Rice? Can we just talk yeah, about yeah, this yeah, for a yeah, second? Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? It must be injury. We don't know. Only be in commentary. Yeah, but yeah. Only be injury. It Chat, let us know. Is it is it an injury for Rice? Because other than that, it that feels is like poor. A very, and who was the other one that went so off? Vieira for Havertz. Yeah. Oh man, that is so poor. Because I already wasn't feeling that confident, especially with both them guys coming on. And especially now, Ooh, what's happening? He slipped over, man. Jesus. Who are Chelsea? Right, Son's going to take any more right to jump back. Back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Sassy. The Sassy's going to be oh, right back that's now. That's poor, yeah. man. That is so poor from Oh, That is so poor. Who gave the ball away for that? Jorginho. <laughs> oh, God. Craig called the two all draw, didn't you? He did, mate. It's, not, it's far from it. There's 34 minutes no, left. Really Plus really injury, still. that 10 you know, minutes you know injury time they put on. This, this, we were questioning like the Spurs mentality. How are they going to play against Arsenal in their own backyard? They have really been there today and fought them, been in their face, stayed with them. I, I'm really impressed with this. By the way, this uh, is effort. so early in, in Angie's tenure oh, yeah. as well. So what does this look like a year from now? Well, you, you know what? When everyone knows everything. I know, but when Solskjaer, like when but Solskjaer, sometimes yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the it, it wears off after, you know what I mean? You think so? Enjoy Ten Hag looked yeah. good but early. But he usually does. 
I'm looking at his history as a manager, way better in his second season. Mate, though. Mate, he, he, and what we're seeing now from everyone that I uh, like trust in terms of respected opinions about what he brought to Celtic was this is a carbon copy of the way Celtic played as well. Yeah. Um, the question now we're asking the Chelsea boys is: Mudrick is coming off. You're you're at nil nil, sixty minutes played. Yeah, red card. We're playing down to ten men. Wasn't he What's one of happening? the better players? Do, what do you do? We're playing for a draw. Playing for a draw, yeah. Honestly. Chilwell coming on? You think so? Yeah, we're going to have to. Oh, you mean for the rest of the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the rest of the no, game. No. So it's that's not the best not, case I think scenario. So. I'll I'll have to. No, I'll what? tell you, you know what's happening. We're getting beat. No, I do counter-attack. Sit back. We're going to get beat. Do you know Pace what it is, right? To, for Chelsea to get a, average a point a game... It, 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 it's it's wild. It's going to be less than that. It's not going to be a point a game, mate. Yeah. We're Pappas getting beat. needs to relax himself, man. This is where you see the character, though, of Chelsea oh, now. Mate. See if they. I love this. I love. I love this man because we're finding out so much in this episode of the kickoff here about Spurs, about Chelsea, and we we've seen. For me, today Chelsea have been very much same as usual. Played some nice football here and there not quite as dominant as you'd expect them to be because of its Chelsea. I'm not saying that it, we're expecting them to be same old Chelsea, but, but just the name Chelsea, you expect them to be taking the game to Villa. It's been quite even. And again, Jackson missing chances. It's, it's more of the same than Listen, what we're used to. Burnley played some nice football here and there. Southampton last season played some nice football here and there. It's just, oh, I don't even know what to say with Chelsea at I'm the minute. I'm feeling it, mate. I'll yeah. tell you what I'm going to say. That wasn't a red card. So, you know... Again, can we can we get a vote, please, uh, if for everyone who's seen the red card of Chelsea in uh, in the chat? I don't know if that's uh, possible, oh, uh, but if you could let us know from the comments uh, roughly what the what the majority of you are thinking, and the, the lads in the back, let us know what you are thinking. Yeah, well, Take, just so just so you guys know, I want to know if Josh a, is wrong. Apparently, yeah, I usually am. Um, <laughs> Just to let you guys know, Rice apparently was an injury, but he didn't look very happy when he was coming off. So, um, so yeah, they're saying it's a, a groin injury, apparently. Well, Who do we think's more likely if we had to give term. a winner in this match now against uh, Spurs against Arsenal? Who do we think's more likely to go on and get a winner? Do you know what? I feel like Spurs are a little uh, bit more I, I feel like Spurs are in Spurs, the descendancy. Spurs, Spurs no, when they go mm, forward, seem to... I, like Arsenal will probably create more chances, but Spurs are the more dangerous oh, this for me. Guy's looking sus. <laughs> it's fifty-fifty, I think, right now. It's mad to see how. I think it's you know you crazy just you take Harry Kane yeah. out of that team. He's just draining them down completely. You take him down, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Because that's Spurs. what he's doing at Bayern, isn't have it? He's yeah, just yeah. draining Craig, them. Craig, have you looked overall as a team like better, like as a system when Kane's gone? Like, no, it's not about God, Kane, God, though. Because if we had him in the God, system, God we'd probably was... score more goals. Oh, my. Really? It's just the system. God, God was... And how everyone's playing. I think as the manager, you've got to tell him. Say Kane was there. You've got to say to him, your job is to stay up here. You're not coming back now. We've got Madison. Remember, we never had a number 10 for these last couple of years. So everyone's like, why is Harry Kane dropping deep? Why is he dropping deep? Because we never had a creative player. Mm. So we had to be the creative outlet and the goal scorer. Now that we've got Madison, anyone that's up top just needs to be up top. Because then you see what Son just did when Madison plays it through for him. You just finish it. Who's this? Solomon. Oh, Man Man and Solomon. Okay. Yeah. Just to uh, touch quickly on the Chelsea match, we're pretty much getting dominated here. Now it's, te now it's 10 against 10. And, and I've got Stink. some information on the poll. Bear in mind, like, you know, not a lot of people want this to be, you know, a yellow oh, stop card. Caveat -nit. But it's uh, it's fifty nine percent. No, it was not. Oh, a so red they're card. agreeing with you. So they're yeah. agreeing with me. Okay. So for once, come on, I'm right. Um, oh, yeah, I, God, I think so it was definitely contentious. Like I think there's every right for Chelsea fans to complain. It it just depends on. It's one of those like in the modern game, it's a red card, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but like for us who like watched it for years, it's like fuck me. How has that become a red card? Now? <sighs> I just. I mean, what are you meant to do as a defender if you're going in for a tackle, you win the ball and that you still get a red card? Do you know card? what pisses me off more, though? It's, it's the way yellow cards are frivolously given out, like Oprah Winfrey giving out cards, man. It's a fucking joke. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so crazy how many yellow cards are given out per game now. And I, I think it's, it's really going to hurt a lot of sides in terms of how reliant we are on our top players because we're going to have so many players missing games here and there who've just picked up... Five yellow cards on the spin or whatever it is. Well, you'd be pleased to know, I, uh, earlier on I said that Jackson's going to play every single game uh, for the rest of the season. He's suspended for the next one, so <laughs> that'll be fun. Because uh, he's got five yellow cards in six games. But he doesn't even play like he's, that. Yeah. That's what I mean. He's, not like, he's not like one of those nasty bastard strikers. Yeah. Mm. You know who like yeah. earns... Like, 
remember Burkham used to leave elbows in here and there, and Shearer was a mm. battler. Like I don't look at him like that kind of player. Nah. So if he's getting suspensions, from oh, hell. Apparently Darwin Nunes has slapped it in for Liverpool. Oh, for fuck! I'm happy about Nunes. I do like. Him. Why? I don't know. I just I, I, I defended him a lot when he first came, <laughs> and and I, I I did say. You play him in his rightful position and give him service and don't like stick him out wide or whatever and just treat him like a striker. Mm -hmm. Well, he will do that for you. Liverpool are just, they're becoming that annoying team, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the difference between Klopp and other managers, man. He can constantly motivate teams. Um, Basuma, oh my God, has he got out of Basuma? <laughs> He's a different player. What the he? hell? That's and you just give it away. Right, that's great. <laughs> After all of that, you, you got caught in possession after yeah, that. Yeah, if, if they scored Too after that, that would have been oh, classic. Yeah, but the areas he wriggles out of, the yeah. problem, for, insane, problem for Arsenal is when they're getting caught out of possession, they. they uh, oh, that's oh, terrible from Madison. Whoa. But, but they're, they're wide open at times, Arsenal here, when, they, when they're getting a counter attack. Mm. They're really wide open. This is a great game to watch. Like It's oh, really delivered. It's for really me. good. As I've got Newcastle to watch after really this. Gonna hurt us not having as much, as, much as I want to win this game, and obviously I'll be really upset if we lose, I can actually walk away from this game now learning a lot about Spurs, though, and actually be like, okay. Can we trust them? Yeah. yeah. I can actually see this now, that this is becoming something. If you draw this game, you are right up there still. Like You've still got to be incredibly confident at the rest of the season, surely. Yeah, but what, what, like, what is, for what? Top for, four, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Or is it top five this season? Yeah, but you'd take that, wouldn't you? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I think that the top five depends on the performance of, of teams like Newcastle, ironically, and the yeah. Champions League. Like, we basically need to show that we're worthy of a fit. Which we are. I think the Premier League is worthy of it. Yeah. But th there was some talk earlier in the week about English teams overall not performing in Europe. Uh, Villa and Brighton getting um, turned over and, um, and even Newcastle getting criticism. I yeah. don't know if you've seen Arturo Vidal did a fucking, he had a bit of a whinge about us on his Twitch channel, apparently. Arturo Vidal's got a fucking Twitch channel. <laughs> Let me, you know, get a life, mate. But um, <laughs> like, like, leave it to the people. No, isn't he old now? We though? got a fucking <laughs> earn a living on He's yeah, doing yeah. a bit of everything, isn't he? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm sick of these he wants a partnership. He wants a partnership, isn't it? But um, <laughs> no, but he was like mugging Newcastle off like all they can do is run. It's like, mate, mm. first fucking Champions League game in 20 years, you prick. Um, Did he lie though? Huh? Huh? Sorry? Was he lying though? Was he <laughs> no, lying? No, I mean, you, know, <laughs> you we, do run a lot. That's that, I mean, that was what we did in yeah, that game. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but one game. Uh, but anyway, like, what do we make of, I don't know, just generally um, how, how the British team has performed in that? I think they've done brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I think the British it. team's done <laughs> brilliant. Apart from Man United, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly. No, I think even Man United put in a spirited performance. I think actually Brighton. Oh. You look at you look at the fact that they were at home. Obviously, they're one of the favourites for the, that Europa League. I think they'll be massively disappointed with the result. But one thing that I'm I'm pretty annoyed about oh, is this is the thing that Spurs see. have got going in their favour is that they don't have Champions League football, they don't have European football to contend with this season. And I do think it's an advantage. That's one reason I was uh, fairly optimistic about today's match against Aston Villa, knowing that they went away to Poland in the week. We're not seeing oh. too much of that from uh, from this. But I think it's definitely worth remembering it's one round of fixtures. If we're going on about countries spread across yeah. European competition, we are still the strongest, definitely. Mm. You think so, yeah? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Yeah, I felt like I, I feel like Brighton are a funny team because whenever they win, everyone like praises them mm. as if like, you know, they, they, they for some reason are less able than everybody else now. Mm. And when they lose, no one says a thing. Ah, mm. it's Brighton, isn't it? Like, if you're a Brighton manager, as much as, as great as De Zerbi is, he's mm. kind of, he's got it licked. Because mm. no one really, Even they're the seen as the plucky underdogs, no matter yeah. how good a football they play. Even the journalists are sticking up for them. Yeah. Which, to be, which, to be fair, that bloke completely mugged Ten Hag off, didn't he? Because Ten Hag obviously said, you know, about the money spent. And the, the journalist went, Brighton's squad costs less than 20 million today. And he was going, yeah, no, but Brighton spent money Money's too. Money's money at the end yeah. of the day. Money is money. Um, I can't talk about Ten Hag. The Man United fans are fucking here. <laughs> uh, I've been getting hammered. Um, but no, I, in terms of the money spent in today's game, uh, Arsenal, uh, Spurs, I mean, how much is uh, Spurs compared to Arsenal? Are they in the same league? Money spent? Yeah. Nah, I don't think so. Arsenal spent quite a lot of money, haven't yeah. you guys, yeah. over the last I, few I years. mean, in terms of what? Over the last... Oh, <laughs> oh my. Oh, Come on, oh, that's got oh, to be... Oh, oh, this is bad. That's got yeah, to be right up there, though. They're going to... They'll have a look at this. This was after the ball had gone. 
There's a there's a goalkeeper gone <laughs> down from a late challenge from the. In was Kekia. it was it a high Come challenge? Oh, no, but it's a late challenge. challenge. No I think it always looks worse when the keeper rolls around like that. We don't yeah, usually see that. Can always roll around like that. I think he could be in trouble here. You know. I we need to you, say this I again. Bet you'd like that. What we're saying. <laughs> Nah. That is very late. Come on. He's out of control. I know what that do you much. think that is, Josh? That, are you choking? No, I'm, I, I think I'm that's asking, a red. I'm, I honestly think it's a red. Because it's eerily similar <coughs> to the challenge that you've just said isn't a red. If Gusto's no. is a red, then what? that's a red. You, nah, Gusto got it. the ball. This guy didn't get the ball at all. Yeah, I know, but honestly, then Gusto completely caught him. Come on. He completely caught him there. I know, but not not with his foot that was up in the air. Not with the foot that was up in the air. He caught him with the other foot. Yeah, I'll give you that. Come on. Honestly. You can't honestly tell me that's on, a red. Honestly, the way that he came through, he scythed him down. I think that could have been. I'm not disagreeing with you. I, the reason I'm comparing it to the, the Chelsea lad is just because of the way he came in. Uh, yes, he did get the ball, but it was a, in terms of. I think it's a similar challenge. Honestly, you'll look back on these two and you'll, and you'll watch them in the light of day and you'll go, Gusto won the ball, followed through, connected with the player accidentally. And this guy's just I absolutely in that taken out of goal. I hear it, but I'm not mad at that's not a red. I'm not mad. Come on. But I've seen him given in this. Oh, I don't Jorginho's know. had a meh uh -oh. since he's come on. Jorginho really is. Jorginho has released the ball or not, so. Meh. Madison looks like it's a little knee problem with him, though. Don't say that, please. Sure, oh, 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 oh. Son. Oh, oh so oh. magnetic. Nah, sh man, wow. Screw you, you get a touch on it. He's saying that it came off the. Uh, I mean, defender, he would he? always say that. <laughs> oh no, please! Madison's down, holding please. his knee. He's got the most assist holding this season now. Knee. Don't do this. Oh, oh, he really doesn't look good. This yeah. doesn't look good. Also, no, it's, his leg, it's about his, time. the leg he's holding is already taped up the fuck as well. This looked like the back of his knee he was holding here. Joe, this could be the one. Oh, oh that's it. Oh. It's gone. It's gone. So, that could be the oh, one just. decent thing. Joe, oh. He, oh. he held the wrong leg to start with, you know. Look at this. Look how it chokes. Oh no, he's done it. Oh, you hate to watch those ones. I remember zooming in. With like Madison, when, when, when Spurs signed him for all yep. that money, We're done, man. the worry was. <laughs> This is why I was saying even <laughs> last time when we said if he's player of the season, for me the big worry is and fair enough, this no, is but don't do this is just a freak isolated yeah, this incident. Is <laughs> this is deep. It's deep. So, but you know, what? we've had Declan Rice out, we got Martinelli out. It's good, man. He's got come out no, here with a I, full I squad. Mean, Let them get one by the player like Madison. The only worry you have is is, is he gonna get injured? He's getting a bit of like rehab work. Give here, him an injection he, now, please. Uh, he, he looks like he's gonna stay on. I looked at the I wish everyone could have seen Grace's face like honestly my heart. He's just got a call to say his grandma. I'll, be honest, like I'll really be honest, it sounds mad. I'd rather lose this game and he don't get injured yeah, yeah. than we get injured that's and how take a point sense. or something. That makes yeah. sense, like long term, I'm not, I can't, please. Goal, Madison. goal, goal for Villa. Aston Villa. Of yes! Sports. It's one yes! nil Villa. Oli Watkins. Yes! Oh my God. Uh, I think that's a lot, but yes. That was a very good thing. Any time Chelsea lose is a good day. In Unai life. Emery masterclass. I have to say, Joey kind of called it when the sending off happened. I said, what happens now? He says, well, we lose. And uh, it looks like it. Because the question before the game is, where are the match winners for Chelsea? Well, we know who the match winner for Villa is. Oli Watkins strikes again. And um, what went wrong here, lads? We've got no bollocks. I don't think it's a call. Cool yeah, pretty much it. Thiago yeah. Silva missed the tackle. As it happens, it was actually in um, oh, Chelsea's favour. They had a corner which was cleared quickly, um, and Aston Villa go two v one, which is so disorganised. When you've got a man sent off, you can't let yourself be in that p position. And Watkins gets around his man and drills so it. And really, that. when you look at it, he puts it in the far post. The defender did the right thing in showing him as far away from the goal as he could. Cole tackled him. Really good challenge there. Yeah. Yeah. And then the keeper goes through it his goes legs. It goes through the legs of the keeper, so, unfortunately. And it's very ironic because this is on a day that Sanchez has actually had a really good gaming goal. He's had a couple of good saves. I'll tell you another one from the rumour mill. I gave you one earlier on. This was another one I heard. Here we go. It's and all what, coming this, out this, now. This is, this He's is, selling his stories yeah. like Jamie Vardy's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Loving it. Come this on. Is, uh, this is one that apparently <laughs> came from Frank Lampard. When someone was saying about Chelsea's sort of defensive frailties, they were saying a lot of people in the media aren't really acknowledging the fact that, and I, I'm not saying I believe this, this is just one from the room mill, that Thiago Silva is massively, massively hindering Chelsea in that side. And at some point, they're going to need to oh, drop Thiago. This is apparently Who's Lampard's the source? Who's the word. source? I mean, on. how old you is would Silva? Know, you, would, you would know him. Who's the source? Okay. All right. How, how old is Silva, though? I mean, of course he's hindering them. He's like 39, isn't he? Uh, yeah. How old is he? I mean... 
39. Outside of you look sensational. Outside of heavyweight boxers, most athletes are retired by the time they're his age, right? Mm. right. So I, we can't blame him really. Um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame him personally. The fact that he's even in the side it, after spending a billion. Poor, man. I'm not so and poor, not man. to talk about the money all the time, but like you've obviously. <laughs> so oh, wait, Chelsea, wait. no pick up where. We're going to be right at the wrong qu side. Qu of the question table. for the Chelsea lads again, though. Earlier in the game, we had chances just like that one, one on one. You give the credit to the Villa goalkeeper. Are you giving the credit to the goalkeeper there, or is that just a bad miss? No, the, the, the coincidence that would sort of keep arising here is we can't finish our chances. It's no secret. It's very widely known that we can't finish our chances. What I'm saying is, yeah, okay, maybe different personnel. Maybe if Ivan Tony's on the end of them. But regardless of any of that, there's a psychological aspect oh. that's coming into things here. And there's a, there's a sort of mental frailty mm. that we're seeing a pattern emerge here with Chelsea that we just can't finish these chances. The and it's, it's, you know, it's concerning because in pre-season, I know people slate me for talking about pre-season, but we were scoring we were scoring in pre-season we were getting goals oh and it's a good a chance one. for Spurs who oh, oh and it's, it, that was good football what a defence uh, from the Gabriel if you saw the whole move it was it was quality yeah, yeah. you guys are you guys are in sync with each other like the, the way the runners are coming in the minute you pick the ball up mm. like everyone knows what the hell they're supposed to be doing under Ange it's clear as day but I feel like we got if we're going to score we got to score now Chelsea have right? got a chance someone, though here if they can release the man and uh -oh. they've done it on. took a little longer than it should have done but uh -oh. you're right back shoot and he's, what the fuck is that? that horrible oh, Chelsea's you know. game's looking like a basketball game every time I look yeah. up yeah. honestly to be Jesus. fair this is actually uh, jolted Chelsea into life yeah, like you sure. say going 1-0 going down with 10 men to Sassy bombing forward but realistically this oh. should have been released to Raheem Sterling even earlier this, this is what Oh wow! Who's we got need, this is what up. happens when you have a centre back arrive. Romero is having a stinker of a game bro He's just picked up an unnecessary yellow for throwing someone to the ground in the box. Do you know what? I've never understood what why is the referee he doing? intervenes there. Why doesn't he just give the foul? Whether it's a pen or whether it's a foul, whatever it is. Why, why is it there that they get awarded? I don't understand. What don't is understand he that. doing today, though? It's the what only... is he doing? Uh, it's just... Uh, I think we should get him off, as mad as it is to say. Actually, we ain't got no other side. Nah, Did Raheem Sterling's goals this it. season both come against Luton? Am I right? Think, uh, oh, yeah. Both in one game? Yeah, it's good too. Because I've just seen him in this game and thinking, if there is someone, although he does miss a lot of chances himself, he's probably oh. the, the, the experienced goal-scoring player that, yeah. that Chelsea have got. Oh, come on. And off, to have only goal. scored in one, one game out of six this mm. season, I'm looking at him going, and we said at the start of the season in, in, in hyping up uh, what Chelsea should be looking to uh. do, he's the player, highest paid player at the club, in fact, who you're looking at going, take the mantle. You know, mm. you're the one we should be relying <coughs> on. Is he underperforming or is it is it just no. again where we look at Chelsea and go, ah, he's not in a good side? I don't think he's underperforming. Oh. I think that Raheem Sterling is the sort of player that when things are going well and you're in a team that not even necessarily going well, but not in crisis like Chelsea seem to be at the minute, he's the sort of player that I think can really do a very good job. Um, however... <laughs> However, I don't I, think... You, you got your contacts in there, I don't... <laughs> Open, man. I don't think that Raheem Sterling's going to be the, the fella that goes and lifts the rest of the team okay. and says, right, you lot might be up to it, don't but I'm going to lead by example and I'm going to do this. He's not so a think, talisman. No, I don't think so. But I'll tell you what, people will laugh at this. We've just brought on Amanda Brohart. That's someone oh. you need to watch very closely because he's very direct, he's strong, he's a physical presence, and he will really have the bit between his teeth here. So right. that's giving me a little bit more confidence. I mean, the, the other thing as well I'd say about that chill well shot having watched it back in slow motion now oh god it's it's offside, he's it looks offside, 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 offside but he's 1v1 he's, he's going to try and put and it in anyway you've got to score that you've got to score that he was Sanchez, way off Sanchez yeah, is proving off, his worth today is that the RB, yeah? Um, yeah. the chill well miss wasn't actually too bad wasn't too bad good, good goalkeeping there yeah I hear what you guys are saying about Jackson, though, your striker, but surely you should feel the same way towards Breuer because has he ever really had a chance in that Chelsea team? As soon as I saw him breaking through the you, Chelsea team, I, he got loaned out in Southampton. Yeah. Then he's had a big injury. Yeah. yeah. So surely he must be looking at it. For as much as you guys are rating San, uh, Sancho about what Jackson, sorry, about what he can go and do, is he's got one goal he's in six games just at the end back. of the day. Well, he's only no, just Breuer's come back, just come after, back. After, after months out. So oh, surely so like, he would be looking at it and thinking, I can do something. I can't yeah. believe we've just taken... J Jesus, oh, Nelson man. on. Oh, and, man. Uh, and you know who we got coming Spurs on? Spurs have brought on Cometh the Hour, 
Come off the man. man. If he scores the winner, if he scores the winner, I'm ripping off my land. shirt. <laughs> but <laughs> not let Richarlison <laughs> score the winner that. at Emirates. Did, 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 this is a different if Arsenal he does team, the, man. Do oh, not let him oh, score man. the winner at Emirates. Arsenal fans kill Richarlison the most. They like that fake Brazilian. Blah, blah. If he scores, my bet. I think this is a, this is a good. Um, <laughs> uh, this potentially is a good change for Spurs in terms of just fresh legs. The sun that's coming Someone off. who's going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. I'm so. Oh, do you know what? it's because Jesus has been injury, but Jesus coming off and Declan Rice not being there Madison as well. Oh, as that well. is. Uh, yeah, must be. It must be hurt. But yeah. but when you think about it though, I know Madison's like obviously always a threat, but like you're, you're bringing on two good players here. It's not like it's not like there's a. I it's mean, they, it looks like they're going to be a bit more holding considering they're taking <laughs> off Madison, who is more of an advanced player and bringing on Hoyenberg. Yeah. And they've already got, what, Saar mm -hmm. and Bissouma there. That's I think Madison's, the, I think Madison's I think, the knot, though. I think there's a bit of a forced change here in Madison picking up that knot. Yeah, maybe. Or I maybe he's knot. just trying to free up their attackers a bit more, let them stay up a little yeah. bit higher and he's got his three centre mids in the middle. I don't know, man. Ultimately, oh... Yeah, it's, this it's has been feeling. really close, man. It's been like a fucking heavyweight title fight. This, but right so now, I'm work. looking at this Arsenal team. We've got Enketia, we've got Havertz, and Nelson. That doesn't feel like that much optimism. Oh, gee, don't mention him. <laughs> you, what, you purposely left him out? Oh, yeah, mate. I didn't even want to. I'm actually really enjoying the pressure that Chelsea are under here as a neutral. And I don't mean that in a, in a nasty way. <laughs> Brutal, Brian. I, Thanks I, very no, much, mate. But, but I always enjoy it. I, I, I must admit, right? Like, I think as football fans, whenever a team goes for it Jeez. in a big way, it, it, it adds so much pressure. And when, when you've got Man United who spent a lot of money or Chelsea spent a lot of money, you're looking at them going, fuck me, you've, you've really gone for it here. And... Other neutral fans will want to see, like, how, how did Chelsea respond here? What is going to happen with Pochettino? And it's looking, it's worse by the game yeah. for me. The, the Chelsea's season is unravelling in front of us. And when you look at the fixtures that they've got uh, in front of them, and Villa at home, as, as much as Villa are a threat this season and, and really respectable, and they've only had one bad game, and thank God it was against Newcastle, you're still thinking that you wouldn't be playing the way you are by now in the season. You'd be finding more of a rhythm. Players would start to look like they had more of a game understanding of each other. And oh, if anything, oh, oh. Chelsea, to me, don't look like they're improving game by game. It, it, you know, they're, they're playing all right, as, as, as Joey said uh, well, but so do fucking Burnley sometimes. Yeah. It's, not, it's not happening. And the longer this goes on, the more you question, well, if we're... 16th in the league in terms of the 2003 turn of the season table so far and yeah they've changed a fuckload in the summer so that can change out of nowhere but where the hell where the hell is the season going because I've got no answer right now unraveling is the key word that you just used mm. there a really concerning thing as well is if you look at this is going to be a loss we know that Pochettino's first five matches <gasps> in the Premier League he's got a win he's got two draws and he's got a couple of losses Graham Potter even when he came into Chelsea, his first five matches, he had a draw and four wins. And he was scoring goals. Uh, his team was scoring goals. That's Graham Potter, who we all look at and go, oh, an absolute flop. You know, um, he was, he, he, the, the cracks were papered over at Brighton. Villa on the and attack here. Villa on the attack here. I think you've got to persevere, though, man. <laughs> Another great, great save. save. I'll tell you what, it, it could be even worse than one. Which is why, again, I think you've got to persevere. Oh, goes, yeah, so, it, do, so do I. I'm just saying there's weight to the argument. Unraveling is the right word, yeah. It goes back to what you were saying, though, when you were like, Pochettino's there, but who else can we get? Like, you've got this guy, Luis Enrique. Those guys have won. What has Pochettino mm. won? He's he's good. I mean, look, listen, one he, league off. Well, no, if we're going know, on, if we're going really on about, won? if we're going on about winners, right? And people laugh yeah. at me here. People will debate it. There's only one man really <laughs> who I would go for as a Chelsea fan. Frank Lampard. No, I go Jose Mourinho. Yeah, Just get him out again. of Roma. Again, Just come back. Yeah, again, come back. do the three Pete. What, for, you want counter attacking football again, yeah? Do you guys not have no harsh feelings towards him as Chelsea fans despite him going Tottenham? Nah. Nah. Slagging off no harsh feelings at all? It's Jose. Uh, Do you special one. Uh, yeah, there's a love affair. Do you know what though, he did for them? It, 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 you, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Joey likes to talk about uh -oh. being like about the ex-girlfriends <laughs> and that. Jose, <laughs> Jose Mourinho's that, that, that hot ex who oh knew how goodness. to do it just how you like it. Exactly. <laughs> and you'll never forget her. And and that's where you go back to Jose. But but this is the thing. I absolutely agree. You got to give Poch all the time in the world. Yeah. But it, what we're finding out here isn't about Poch, in my opinion. It's about the caliber of players that Chelsea have in their squad right now, and how many match winners they have, and where Ten Hag is very fortunate to have two players, neither of which he signed to carry his ass, in Bruno Fernandez, Marcus Rashford. Poch has been given this squad who don't have that. 
and if Nkuku is that guy, he's injured. So he he's got to find out who the fuck is he's going to hang his hat on. Sterling isn't that guy. Uh, the, uh, Palmer, uh, who looks mm -hmm. like a bright spark at times, but he's very young. Is he? You can't put that pressure on him. Same with Mudrick, in my opinion. Same with Jackson. There's just, and that was the one, one thing about buying all these young players. Taking on for Levi. Brian, <laughs> Brian, this is the thing I would say here. Yeah, you know that I'm very optimistic, and you know even after we lose today, next time round when we're playing, I'll be optimistic again. You know how I carry myself with Chelsea. Absolutely. But you just mentioned Sucking the in bill. injuries Actually, there. Sucking it bill. would make no difference. Make no difference if we didn't have these injuries. We the, what one. what is going on with us is not to do with injuries because okay, you could say right, well the eleven you can field, okay, maybe it's not up to Champions League quality, but it's not a relegation battle inside. Mm. And the way we're performing at the minute is like a side that are going to be in a relegation battle. So true, yeah. Jesus, man. It, uh. Can I just say on this game here, yeah. If we could find another level, I think Arsenal for the last ten minutes are here for the take. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, it's with all respect. They don't look like themselves at the moment. Am, am I right in thinking? Uh, do, do, you, do you disagree here, um, Manel? Is like Arsenal seem a bit daydreaming. But this is they, exactly. They, 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 they're sort of present, but they're not switched on. For sure. But this is where I go and say about the strength in depth with City. Look, Declan Rice came doing? off and we brought on Jorginho. Jorginho has come on and had a disaster class. We've just brought on Reese Nelson. Look, listen, I love Reese Nelson. He's an Arsenal Academy player. But we've brought on Reese Nelson. And it's just like, that's the difference in yeah. strength. Whereas with City, it doesn't matter who gets injured. Quality players are always coming in. Yeah. This doesn't look like the same Arsenal side I've been seeing. Right now, it, it's crazy. We're at home right now against Spurs and they're actually doing very well against us. No, this is, this is actually, time, it's crazy. this is a very even game. And this, is the, and this is what we wanted to say from Spurs is oh, like, uh, what, what happened? Reece Nelson, oh, Reece do something. Chance, Jesus. Oh. blast is over. We, we were wondering like, Confidence-wise, tactics-wise, level of player-wise, are, are, are Spurs going to be able to handle those punches coming back and keep swinging? And they've definitely done that today. Like. But can we go one step further and find a winner? I if, don't know. You've it's, took the fight to the Emirates, though. man. We're cursed at this flipping ground. It's if, a you're, curse. if you're going to do it, it would have to be this game as well. Yeah, Listen, we've got we've got a couple injuries as well. You guys have been doing well. If you're going to do it, it'd be now. But I mean, no. I don't think you're doing it. Neither do I. We're cursed. I've seen us at Back Anfield goose, many man. times. We Back go to Anfield, outplay Liverpool sometimes and still won't walk away with anything. we got a corner Arsenal. here too. Come on, Arsenal, Arsenal man. The boys need something special. Uh-oh. Come on. Go. Looks Come it. On. Oh. <sighs> Glanced uh, across the goal there. Another corner. Uh, and to be fair, the uh, Spurs defender's got just enough on it to you, keep this out. Do you know who's done decent? And I can't lie. I already know most of you guys' players as well, but it's, it's the other centre-back, the left centre-back. Um, he's done Landon. all right today. Yeah, he's done all right. Yeah. I've been surprised. No, he's good. He's done good. All right. He's, all done, he's definitely fair. been better. I mean, considering yeah. he, uh, it looks like he's been almost carrying Romero as yeah, well. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, now nah, he's done well. Credit to him. Another mad head. Do you know what it is? We had Sanchez and Dyer at centre-back. Wow. Davison Sanchez and Eric Dyer. I think this I can is, beat you there. Kalazanach Mustafi Socrates back free. Jesus yeah, that Christ. Was bad. Oh my I'm a, goodness. I'm going to take you all to school with people like Titus Bramble. <laughs> Don't even start. Most old Colicini. goals, mate. He's got a record. Uh, yeah, that's a man who's got a record. Bless him. We still love you, Bramble. Oh, I remember Colacini with his big afro. Oh mate, my goodness. Mate. He had one good season and they dined out on that for about 10. <laughs> um, I miss Roman we're, so we're, much. We're, we're, we're in the um, Roman Abramovich. I miss him so much. Mate. I love him. Me. <laughs> Shouldn't say it, Do you know I what miss, it is, right? I miss that. It's, it's a great it's area. People don't want to talk about it, about do they? We're talking about Roman Abramovich. If I could back. have oh, Roman no, no, Abramovich no, back for, at my club oh. for just one day, <laughs> I would bite my hand off to have that man back. He's... Oh, I miss him so much. <laughs> Isn't it, I tell you who I don't miss. Kai Havertz. Oh, you're, going on, you're going on like it was a tap-in, though. It wasn't a tap-in. Guys, let's just watch this volley. Let's just watch this volley, though. Ooh. I'm not going to lie. Listen, you're your striker. Your striker who's supposed to be your bagsman is probably doing that same thing, <laughs> which is even worse. I don't miss him though. I'm sorry. I just have to say. Yeah. I yeah. Kai Havertz, yeah. I don't miss you. Because you, you, oh, you should have hope in that. Oh, from Romero. Yeah. Um, but no, um, <laughs> We'll go back to uh, we'll go back to Joy there because like I get what you mean. Like when you've got an owner who's just competent and 
Mm. Yes, here's the funny thing: is we 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 used to give Chelsea grief for how much money they spent. Don't fall. Uh, because they oh, would mate. they would do this thing where they'd go a step fo- uh, backwards, a step forwards, a step backwards, and they'd have these off seasons. Mm. But then out of nowhere, they'd be in a run for the title again. Yeah. And then a year would go by, and he'd be like, "Oh, they're on a down." And then all of a sudden, they'd win a Champions League. Roman just knew for what, and we we never really understood what this guy knows about football. But what is clear as day now is a, a, a quite a lot. He, he obviously had a passion for it and he had the right advisors around him. Chelsea were always in the picture. And for the first time ever, because of Roman Abramovich leaving the club, it seems the new chairman oh, doesn't a have a clue how to keep you in that picture. Well, that's uh, one thing that's key. I might be wrong, but well, it just no, seems no. Like it. Look, look, it looks like you're right. One thing that's key there is... <laughs> The, uh, the ability to delegate maybe what he doesn't know. Todd Bowley comes in, he <coughs> he's running the show. He's never worked in European football before. Wasn't, didn't he make himself oh, the f- director of football? Director of football, oh, and right. he advised oh, whatever whoever was the manager at the time that we should play a 4-4-3. Four, four, now, I would quite like to play a 4-4-3 four, four, if it Me was too. fucking possible. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. It's, that's, I think that's it's probably the only way we're going to win thing, games. I love it. If we are a four-four-three, yeah. to be fair. The sad thing is, is I yeah. really think Todd Bowley cares, and I think he's passionate, and and it's just misplaced, though. You know what I mean? You like, think Todd Bowley knew what Chelsea's ground oh was my before, God. before they came on the market. Oh, Do you think God. Todd Bowley, before Chelsea came on the market, after the UK government did what they did to Roman Abramovich, do you think that Todd Bowley knew that Chelsea played at Stamford Bridge? Honestly? Yeah, probably not. No. Probably not. No. No. But, you, you know, oh, fuck me. He, he's really good at telling them, give me a hell yeah. Yeah. So give them that. So yeah. Or, or, or before the match when they said about Real Madrid, you know, and he said, oh, I think we're going to beat them 3-0. Yeah, mate, all right, look, it's, it's good for a bit of confidence, but at the same time, like, nothing. you're an idiot. You know what, Roman Abramovich, because he wouldn't give interviews in that way and he wasn't, like, so flamboyant, with it, he, 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 he wouldn't get he wouldn't off. embarrass you guys. He was just a <coughs> steely but, ideal of you, death. You know, there was a massive James connection. Bond villain looking cunt. There was a massive connection to the culture around the football club. I know a lot of people involved in the football club that work around the football club. I used to sell the fanzines for a pound outside the ground when I was growing up. Roman Abramovich has these people's numbers. Roman Abramovich is, is a personal friend of these people around the football club. Do you know what I mean? There's a massive connection there with Abramovich, JT, Lamps, the sort of core and the spine that we saw at Chelsea. It's most He'd have them on period. the yacht with them. And exactly, yeah. uh, exactly. And, and now there is just a huge, huge disconnect when it comes to the people running the club to, to you know... Do you think that there's, we could see a quick turn from the Chelsea fans in a bowly out? They'll go... They'll go to Bowley out before they'll go Pochettino out. I'm, I'm, but I'm he's not going nowhere, so that's exactly. just a waste of shouting. Exactly, exactly. It's just a waste of shouting. I think it's oh, really, Bowley out, all right, I'm going to say It's a really now. interesting thing to think about, though, is like, is, is to cut to the chase so quickly and go, look, we know Poch is a football man. Mm. We know what we're seeing on the pitch right now is just an absolute amalgamation of transfer policies, of potential wonder kids and people Uh-oh. who may or may not, uh, you know, amount to anything. Josh, do, do you have a bit of that in you and that you are worried that long-term Bowley is the wrong man and that we're, we're seeing that unfold early on. It's not Bowley's decisions anymore. Like, Bowley, I love I love it because he'll be a lightning rod and he'll take a lot of the pressure now and we kind of need a lightning rod at the moment because there is so much um, sort of like stress and pressure on the team. But like, we're six <coughs> games into a complete and utter transformation. I understand why Joey's upset and like, why it feels like the world is ending at the moment and we've spent a lot of money and it isn't coming good. But we've bought players that are 20, 21, 22 and we're expecting them to turn it on in the Premier League straight away and it's just like we like we as Chelsea fans we knew that when Bo- Bowley came in and when the transfer policy that we were going under right now happened we knew that it was going to be a long term thing so to go oh you know Bowley out everything out like everything is going up tits up right now fair enough but it's not long term going to be like okay. that so but, like but, it's it's a bit it's a bit reactionary to, to be so negative in the position that we are okay. someone who is 
a footballing man would <coughs> understand, say, for example, and I don't want to dig this player out, the 45 million you spent on De Sassi, okay? You got Levi Colwell, you got Chalaba, who actually has never really put a foot wrong from us. We got Thiago Silva, albeit he'll be gone. We got Badia Shill, we got players in that position. The 45 million you've just spent on De Sassi, why did we not go for an IK Gundogan when he left Man City? Why did we not go for a more established player in that thing? And there must be a bit of when, you know, we were saying about Roman Abramovich understanding football obviously a lot more than Todd Bowley has to go right I get it sell on value and all that's brilliant but they won't have much sell on value if they end up in the championship so let's make sure we just got a few older heads in there who can come in and give a bit of stability and at the same time maybe we don't get rid of a Ruben Loftus-Cheek maybe we don't get rid of a Kovacic maybe we don't get rid of some of the players that we have got out the door and and there's there's so just, many just going back to the point that Josh made of we, mm. we, we, we don't know yet you know oh. everything's early days with oh, Bowley, yeah. but equally we also don't know it's going to go good. And all we do have is the data that we're getting fed right now and the data we've had this season, but also last season, where there was knee-jerk reactions, there was a, a scattergun approach to the transfer s situation. We now seem to have a direction, but the, a direction that doesn't look like it's working immediately, but might work. But what, what, we, are, what we do have is um, a situation that we thought would be better now than what it is. So... Everything is pointing in a bad direction, but it might not always be that way. I get that. But when I look at Bowley, nothing is telling me this guy is going to steer this club to trophies. He, nothing. He's, not one thing. He's not in charge of anything to do with the transfer policy. or the Everyone he's appointed he, is. And he, he has made those decisions. He made a lot of decisions to make himself director of football last year, which was a laughing stock of a situation. So all I'm saying is, is like the, the data we're getting is all based on... Uh, everything we've seen in the last year. And the story I told earlier about him going in the changing room, that happened. That happened. Mm. He's gone in the changing room. You've got to understand the culture a little bit, not just of the club, just maybe a little bit of British culture. You've got to understand the way that things need to be done, things that are off limits and aren't done, you know. I'm not, I don't know whether Roman Abramovich would have ever gone in the changing room or not, but I know for a fact the only place we saw Abramovich that close to the scene was maybe on the pitch in Porto at the oh Reebok in 2005 so on the pitch. Shit. He wouldn't have been going into the changing rooms <laughs> blasting players when we lost at home. It's just a, a disconnect of understanding there. And I, I very much do believe that look there's a there's a possibility that with the personnel we've got and with the manager we've got in charge who I do still very much rate there's a possibility that things start to look a lot more optimistic things start to come good a little bit but no one can be above criticism. And if you buy a football club and, and, and you know, you know how many people, it's not just support that football club, not how many people's life can hinge on that football club. My mood now, you know, <laughs> can be a lot worse. And there's so many fans. You've got to accept that you are going to come in for criticism when things aren't going well. Mm. I, right now, it, it, it feels like the, all Chelsea can do is hope that time changes things oh. because nothing we're saying so well. is suggesting that it's going to be any better than, I don't know, like, you guys are looking like a mid-table side right I now. I think we're looking worse than a mid-table yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually worse. looking worse that's, that's the, the, the scary thing is, if we even if we were looking like a mid-table side, we kind of take that as Chelsea fans because we know that the journey we're going on. Restart. But to be underneath that is... is I don't think for one second... That I think that you are, you guys are taking, uh, like Josh in particular, is taking quite a humble approach to this. Of we're going on a journey where we're buying a load of young players, and that hopefully in the long run they'll develop as a squad and we'll win things together. That seems quite a reasonable and humble approach. Well, chance. However, oh. however, oh. I don't think that yeah. any Chelsea fan at the start of the season had that in their head. I think that they thought we are buying the best of the best young players and therefore we may not win the league this season, we may not win a trophy, but we will be up there in the top eight at the very worst yeah. and we will be looking threatening in every single game and that we will have in, in, in things to inspire hope. Th this isn't that. This is a mile off that. So when you're talking, Josh, I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm looking at reality and I think that they're like they're, th they're not in line I right think now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And pre pre season, I think Jerry and I we, we we talked about this quite at length about how we were really excited about the the squad and Nothing. how it was shaping up and how we got this new manager and there was positivity around the team and pre season had gone incredibly incredibly well. But like the Premier League is um, is brutal, isn't it? Like it it sort of. Um, it sorts you out so, so quickly and it sort of makes you realise that there are good teams left, right and centre up, up and down the league and you get found out and we have been found out earlier in the season but I just think 
you've got to give this guy time and you've got to give the okay. squad time as yeah. well. So well, That's why I'm talking about Bowley yeah. more than Poch in the players because we just don't know. But with Bowley, everything from him coming in has been a bit chaotic. We, we're talking about Bowley here. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Have you ever heard me bash any of our players? Have you ever heard me really say anything negative about Poch? I'm all for getting behind the team. But the concerning thing is when we've had, let's be honest, barring Liverpool, a pretty easy start to the Premier League season with the run of fixtures we've had, we, we've had right? I'm at, the, I'm at Stamford Bridge on Wednesday night against uh, Brighton in the Cup. We'll probably lose that match, right? You look, at, you look at Fulham, right? Fulham away. Do you honestly think that we can sit there and go, oh, yeah, we get three points there? So what I'm saying is, at the minute, I get a result can change everything, but where are the three points coming from? Mm. And if you're a team, I don't care about how much we've spent. That's not relevant to me. If you're a team and you don't know where your next three points are coming from, surely... Surely that's concerning. Man United, we talk about the fact that they were a little bit, I think crisis is a harsh word, but they were on a bad run of form. But we know that when they go to Burnley, they're probably going to win. Exactly. We go to Burnley soon. Exactly. Do I think we're probably going to win? No. no. It, sounds like, it sounds like from Chelsea's perspective that the players, especially the manager, is yeah. way too protected. And for me, that's, oh, come no. on, surely, that like, surely there needs to be a bit of pressure on him. And it seems like there's none right I, now I just at think all. It's difficult because uh, he, he, he's just had two minutes in the job and uh, to, to want him out already. It's not even to want him out, but at least to demand more. Like, like you said, they've had an easy run yeah. of games. And with the team they have, they arguably should have still won those games. I think, yeah, it, it comes down to who are you playing and is there any real right for <coughs> them to be getting a result against you with the amount of money you've spent? And the answer is no. So Chelsea definitely should have done better based on just squad value. Go, uh, going back to uh, this game, we're in the uh, dying uh, seconds here and Arsenal are peppering uh, the Spurs box with long uh, don't, passes don't just into follow the box. It, man. Oh, man. Are, are we seeing any route to, uh, to, to either team looking the more likely to well, score? Well, I feel like oh, we've, right, we've decided to Poor just try right, and yeah. reserve it and get away with the point now it looks like for the last you, for the you, remainder of injuries are you happy with that mate or uh, I mean we're away from home given the Madison injury as well I think so yeah I think I think we need to just try and get out of there with a point man it's more of a blow for them I think, they're at home. I, I think and they got to keep up with Man City I think given how key Madison over. was this ain't over yeah. yet I, I'm worried I feel like there's an ESR I don't think I feel like there's a ESR story um, here I don't think you can blame Angia for, for seeing the game out when your key creative player yeah, look, this is, this goes is what injured. can happen. And actually, Spurs, even if they lose this in the dying seconds, don't have see. defended well, <clears throat> right? They've defended really well here. And, and to be honest, Arsenal, if you're looking at the way they're trying to score this goal, it's not very Arsenal. This is like. such a different looking it, Arsenal it happen, team though. Right now, that's even out right now. We've got Jorginho there for us. You've got Kai Havertz and en Enketia, Reese Nelson and Smith Rowe off front three right now. Ooh, oh, the danger. Right oh, go. Have won it in a good position. Why would you force that pass? Oh, Jesus. And then we forced it again. It's, it's been, I think it's been poor from both teams. Look at Basuma. Look, look, look at him. I Go on. Look at him. Basuma. Go on, we can He's win got it. A chance to pay. You've got a foul So to the left side. <laughs> Havertz. The right side. Spurs Fucking can cross it in. Imagine. Oh, oh, it was Richarlison as well. Shot. It was Richarlison. That was a terrible Ooh. shot. Man. He's only good if you get headers. He it, can't strike. Up yeah, it's, um, um, it, we're in the dying seconds now anyway. It's just gone full deserves, time. It probably deserves uh, oh, it's, uh, oh, it's a corner. It's a corner. Oh, my. Oh, we got a that corner. That could have went in. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got a full time at, um, at Chelsea, by the way. Aston Villa uh, players are in a, in a circle celebrating at Stamford Bridge. Uh, three points. Please wait, hold on. Last minute header and we run off, bro. Imagine. Nah, stop imagine. <laughs> right, get the take headphones off. Let me take the headphones off. The pearls off, are coming if off the lot. If we get hey, put your headphones back on, bro. Put your headphones back on, bro. I love that. Cross in from the corner. Oh. Good, good cross, to be fair. Oh, boy, um, And it's all and over. That's it. <sighs> Mate. My brother. Good, uh, really good game. That uh, uh, that was one of my favourite games of the season in terms yeah. of dra drama, Jeopardy, some really good bits of football. <laughs> and uh, I think the key takeaway is Arsenal, as good as they are, they're yeah. not as clinical and as cutthroat as City. And Spurs, we were wondering what the what the underbelly was going to be like in terms of how they, they got the metal for, to, to take the game to Arsenal. They did. They came back twice from going a goal down. You said that that would be key, that yep. you didn't think you'd win if you went a goal down. Not only did he do it, you did it twice, mate. Mm. That's a massive W. But we didn't win. 
No, but but, but still, you're right. We came bro, back. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Bro, this is 100%. a game where you would be terrified of at times last yeah, season, yeah, yeah. season before. This is a fucking hell of a step up for well, Spurs. This, this is what I said before the game. I, I wasn't scared of this game. It was more, it's a test to see where we are. This is the kind of, you know, we need to figure out where we are in this journey. It's very early. And I did call my prediction 2-2 two, two before the game. I said it. Well, um, right. And it's, it's come to fruition. But yeah, I thought we had enough to take it to Arsenal. But I just didn't. You lost your best player, and you still see. Yeah, that game yeah, yeah. But I, I, the only thing I'll be a bit frustrated with was like around that 70th minute to 80th minute. There was like a 10 minutes where we were on top, and they looked a bit leggy, and and we could have took advantage of that, and we didn't. But you know, to come out of Emirates and not lose, and we're undefeated six games into the season. Mate, still, that's massive. Yeah, Manel, and we stay above them. <laughs> what you say, Manel? Uh, you know, it's not a bad result. But it's obviously not a great result. No, it's definitely not a great result. I mean, it's not a great one. And against Spurs, you definitely want to win at home because you know when you go away to their ground and especially based on the way they're playing, it's going to be a very, very tough game. I would never, like, from now, would I take a point right now at Spurs away? No way. I always believe we can go there and win. But ultimately, no, it's not a great result. Is that Arsenal at their best? No, I think that kind of sums up still where we are. The squad itself isn't complete. Two of our left wingers are out. We've brought on Reese Nelson. And we started Enketia, like for Arsenal right now, in a derby game starting Enketia. For me, it kind of shows where we are. Declan Rice gets injured and then we bring on Jorginho. He it's had a, a nightmare It, as well, it sums he? up what I was saying about the whole City thing. The reason why the Liverpool won that league that year, despite me thinking they're a better team than City, mm. and they beat them most times they were going head-to-head -head during them three, four years. The reason they won it that one year was because they got no injuries. They got very lucky. Their whole 11 stayed yeah. fit. So you need a lot of luck to beat that City mm. team of no one getting injured. Because with them... Guardiola is a genius. Someone comes out, he changes the whole puzzle. He changes everything. Yeah. So it's, but yeah, now nah, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> Considering how the game was going, I'm happy taking 2-2 because I actually thought they could go on a win. Which I is think in the long me. term, it looked like a good point for both teams uh, because I think Spurs look like they're really going to battle for top four. What do you reckon, lads? I think they're going to be right up there. Yeah, I think they're really dangerous. I was, I've been picking them up all season. I think mm -hmm. they've been absolute quality and they are really underrated. A lot of people aren't fancying them to be right up there. And I think, I think they will be by the end of the season. We said this, if they got a result at the Emirates, like that's a, that shows that they are going to be the real right deal. Up there, so the only enough. question is if Madison's injury <laughs> is going to be a longer yeah. one. He was mm. walking around at the end of the yeah. game there, so you hope that that's that's a good I sign. Can't believe it's I, think, I think it's a good point for <laughs> both teams, but I tell you what. I don't think it's relevant. I don't think it matters what's going to happen because I think that both teams are pretty much nailed on for Champions League football and neither team are going to be able to budge City though? off that top spot. Uh, it, that's, the, that's the interesting thing truth. is just like, I, right, I think Arsenal and Liverpool look really, really strong for second and third and that fourth or fifth, depending on how the Champions League uh, shapes up. Villa, Brighton, Man United, Newcastle. It's really going to be interesting to see what Champions League takes out of Man United and Newcastle and how Villa and Brighton keep pushing. Uh, just to round off on uh, Chelsea, we, we really did cover it, but is there any final thoughts uh, for you, lads? 1-0, uh, down to 10 men. <laughs> yeah. A similar sort of game than what we've seen many times. This Another season. great you know, you performance. Yeah, you know, you know the, the funny thing as well, yeah, <laughs> is obviously we've spoke about underlying stats. I know without looking at anything from the way that game's gone that our underlying stats again are going to be good. And then again, people like me and yourself, Josh, when we're wanting to draw optimism, will go, well, look, when we're putting up these sort of numbers, but the eye test doesn't lie. Mm. And the fact that we went through on goal two, three times in that match, never confident. Never, never confident. Yeah, and, and they were like, there were great chances, obviously. Uh, Johnson, again, another sitter. Uh, and then um, the left back came on. Uh, sure, well. Chilwell, sorry, he went through. And yeah, there were good saves, but it, you know you can't have great keepers every single week against us. I don't want to. I don't want to even voice it because it will just sound like it's clickbaity type content. But I know what's on my mind Go on at then. the minute. Give us it. Well, no, we need to start. With, it, it doesn't matter who you are, how much you spend, whatever. If, like I say, you're not looking at games and going right, we should get a win here then you, you know what direction it's going in. Something needs to change drastically. Are we... Do I think it will? Yeah. But at the minute, I'm only saying that because I think we've got a good manager and good what personnel. What was the clickbait thing? Because I could do with a bit of that. What, was, what, was, what were you thinking? Were you worried about relegation battle? Yeah. Because just to be clear, statistically speaking, this isn't, this isn't clickbait. This yeah. is stats. Like one point a game is what they're averaging and actually less than that this season. It's five points out of six games. But if you look at them from the beginning of the year, they're averaging that. So like, they're on course for a relegation battle. Let's, let's, let's flip it, right? And, and look at it from the other end of the table, right? 
the Premier League has got a lot of strength. Teams that don't come to our mind straight away are good teams. You know, Crystal Palace are like a good Brentford team. Them, teams yeah, like Brentford are good yeah. teams, whatever. Do you honestly think that we've seen enough at the minute to go, right, well, if any Chelsea fan thought they were getting Champions League football, that's long gone, but you get a top 10 finish. You're not even going to back us at the minute to get a top no, 10 finish. No. What, what I will say is I'll always counter it by saying I think we've got good personnel and I think we've got a good manager. And I think that if things can start to go in our favour a little bit more than they have at times, we've had bad luck, we've had sendings off, things like that. But there's only so many times you can make excuses before you start getting wins on the board. But do, do, mm. The thing that makes me laugh, right? Is the only team he's beaten is fucking Luton. Oh, I'm glad you find it funny. <laughs> no, like, but like, it, that to me is like... Wait, wait, was that a close game? No, no, nice. they blew Luton away. Oh, all right, I'll give you that. Uh, I was at the match. We were, it wasn't one of our better performances. It was, ironically, no, but like, in, t- in front of goal, you just got a lot of chances. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I, think, I mean... I think before we head off that, I want to give a shout out to a team we haven't talked about too much today. <laughs> Liverpool. They're right up there, second in the league, yeah. 16 points. Like, again, we didn't really see that coming, did we? And they've smashed West Ham I think today, we all 3-1. Knew that their first team are capable of putting this together, but I just didn't think that it would go like that in terms of strength and depth. I thought they'd get more injuries, and I thought things... And also, like, the vibes before the season started with Salah and losing... What I can give Klopp an amazing amount of credit for is you've lost key characters, and people don't really... When, when players get a bit leggy... You know, you're not playing Milner and Henderson and players like that for what they can do on the pitch, but you want them in the in the in the dressing room to really create that atmosphere of like the standards. Mm. They're the standard bearers. So to lose them sort of players, usually that takes the wind out of a squad sales, and yet not at all. We all we all very much around this table think that Man City are going to go and win this league title, right? And I, at the time, when uh, Liverpool had the bids come in for Mo Salah, I thought, what are you doing? 32-year-old or whatever he is, you know, and you're, you're turning down that sort of money. It could end up being a masterstroke come the end of the season, keeping on to Salah, because I tell you what, looking at what I've looked at so far and the fact that I haven't even really thought that Liverpool have gone through the gears yet, I think it's quite likely they're City's closest challengers this year. And the law of averages, listen, Pep doesn't care about statistics and the law of averages. If Pep's going to go and win it, he's going to. But the law of averages would suggest that City don't win the league this season. I very much think they will. Law of averages would suggest they don't. So if you look at anyone, you say who's going to be there or thereabouts, you can't really back against Liverpool. So if, if Haaland gets an injury... I, I strongly disagree with that. Come on, how can you completely write off Arsenal? Like, there's no way you can just completely... There's one thing you turning around and saying, you know what, based on what I've seen and based on the experience within the squad and that they have Mo Salah, no one else in the league has a most. You know what, Haaland. Do you but agree Mo with Salah that? Is, no, you, I'm, not, I'm, not not, with I'm not completely no, writing Arsenal in, off. In terms I'm saying of just putting your Liverpool balls on ahead. the line, lads. If Arsenal will finish ahead of Liverpool. That's what you're saying. Arsenal will okay. finish ahead of Liverpool. I'm, I'm pretty certain. What makes you say Arsenal. that? Though? Because I feel like Liverpool, the difference what Liverpool have that Arsenal don't have is they have winners in their side. They actually have winners with the Virgil van Dijk, Robertson, Trent. They've, they know how, they've won it before. But I think it both comes, or both of our starting 11s are good, even though I think ours is better. I think in terms of a squad, our squad is also better than theirs. So Arsenal would do well to finish ahead of Spurs. What? I mean, I, I mean, I they, think the worry this is, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I think that, that that Villa result done something to <laughs> yeah. him over here. You no, know, we're about to pinch him. Took a part of myself. The, the, the <laughs> worry with Arsenal, though, is, is just that the Champions League is intense and yeah. the Europa League yeah. is not so intense. And maybe Liverpool can can rest a bit more than what Arsenal can because they have to be full throttle. But for as much as I was talking about Arsenal squad, we do have a good squad. It's just we don't have a city level squad. Our squad is a very good squad as a whole, which is why I still back us to finish second place. It's just in order for us to actually pit that first place challenge is one is dealing with this whole new Champions League phase. How do we deal with that? And it's can we keep our squad fit? Can we keep that? Do you think you guys performed to the normal level with Champions League football midweek, or did you did you notice a little bit of a difference in terms of your legs? I think di- I know. I think it's too early to say. I think it's really? too early in the season okay. to say that yet. Uh-huh. I think I reckon we do go past group stages. It's it's those first knockout stages. Is how do we react to those? And we've been blessed with slightly easier group. I say this now, and then we're going to get knocked out. But with a slightly easier group, so it's that's when we're really going to see. That's when the test really starts for me. I'm be honest, just quickly, based on the start of the season, I actually think Liverpool are going to finish above Arsenal now as well. Yeah. This this is early days, obviously it yeah, can yeah. change, but it's it's for me it's the managers that are always the key difference in these sorts of things. Obviously you need players to stay fit and whatnot, but Klopp and Pep are like that pedigree. 
Arteta looks like he's on his way there. He's done really well at Arsenal over these years. But we're talking about managers that have won league titles, Champions They're Leagues. Veterans, like, it's different yeah. level. Yeah. It's just a different level. So if Liverpool keep players fit and keep performing the way they're performing. I don't see why they can't finish above Arsenal. But yeah, I don't know. Based on this performance today, I wasn't impressed with Arsenal today at the Emirates, I'll be honest. I thought it would be way more like... I like it. Cutthroat. I'm being real. It's yeah, not banter. Still, yeah. But when you talk I thought they would have put in a better performance when than you that. Talk about your squad and you say like you're pleased now with the squad depth that you've got, right? Do you not think today you brought on players that made your team much Jorginho. worse? That, that starting 11, fair enough, is right up there in terms yeah. of quality, in terms of title yeah. challenging. But then the level below that, you're going, But do you know what it is? It's, the level, it's not just the level below that. It's the level below that. It's just It just so happens to be that not only did our first choice left winger Martinelli get injured, our second choice winger Trossard got injured. So Enketias, not only did Partey get injured, who's ultimately our first choice defensive midfielder before Rice came in, is Rice and Partey are now both injured. So both those roles is our first and second choice. It's not like we got, a, I don't know, a left back injury or a right back injury where Tom Yasu could now come in. It's getting injured in the same position twice. Whereas yeah. for City, it just That's doesn't a great affect point. them. But, but this is this is going to happen now, right? We were talking about yeah. the... the When I was talking earlier in the season about the Champions League impact, it's not about like playing games and, and players having to do it. It's about the injuries and how it affects yeah. your squads. Because ultimately, if it's muscular and you're having all these muscular injuries, like that's what's going to cause it. It's the load. Like 10 minutes of fucking game we're all playing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though in Champions League it's not. Yeah, <laughs> Champions yeah, yeah. League yeah. Is but not that's the thing. Like When I'm looking now about squad depth and you, you say, I don't know if Liverpool have it, I'm like... I mean, it's not that different, is it really? It's not that different in terms I of the squad. I still do think Arwen is stronger than them. If you look at our starting 11, once we have our starting 11, I mean, it's thumbs up whether you want to back Arsenal's 11 or not. But when you look at our bench, I believe our bench is better than this. If we go through the players on our bench, I believe we'll have a better. But you're right. Maybe it could be. It's not like it's definitely better. I guess it's a subjective take and I'm an Arsenal fan, so I'm going to say ours. <laughs> but I think I can rightfully say, looking at it both subjectively and objectively, I can say, I think we have a better bench. But if them. they're bringing Nunes off the bench, yeah. like, is there anyone that's making that level of impact? I, mean, I know, but it's Nunes now. It's Nunes now as well. It's, I mean, if you were saying last year, oh, they're bringing Nunes off the bench, everyone say, oh, fucking, oh, all right, cool. That's all well and great. But this is what I mean, right? When I'm, I'm, I actually think that Liverpool could challenge like yeah. Arsenal, and ultimately, let's be honest, it's a mini league that they're playing yeah, yeah, for anyway. Because sure, City are going to sure, win it anyway, sure. so it's actually the battle for second place. And Liverpool, it is Liverpool important got, though, because if anything happens to Haaland, you, you got to be right up there, fucking <laughs> right up there, awesome. But yeah. I don't think it makes a difference. We've seen it already. Even now, like honestly, going into this game now, I saw Rodri got a red card, and my friends messaged into the group chat saying Rodri is out for the Arsenal game, and I thought, oh, that's a key one for them. But is it fucking really? Yeah. Matthias Nunez is when you can draw this game. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne's out. If Haaland does go down injured, they've Honestly, got they've got Alvarez, Alvarez. You know what I mean? So they've it's, sucked yeah. the life out of me. That that yeah. City team of where are you playing City? Where's that game? At home, yeah. uh, at Emirates. Uh, at Emirates. I feel. Do you know what? I feel really sorry for you because City are better than you. The fucking league are better than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, let's see your better. We'll we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Before we go, we just want to give another huge thank you to our sponsors, the great guys over at Fair Play. This is the betting app where you can put the arguments in the WhatsApp group to the test by betting your mates with an easy uh, system where basically you can just put a tenner on, offer it to your mate, it goes straight to his phone, like a text message almost, accept the bet, and boom, you can bet about fighting, football, any argument you're having, it's that easy. And it's all to do with betting with your mates. It's not not like a bookie or or anything like that and you can get a five pound free bet uh, with us when you use the code TKO on the app the link for that is in the description below we're going to be working with these guys plenty over the season so do join in and maybe we could be uh, putting some bets on with you guys I've had a bet on with Josh did neither of us won so oh, no, I had Spurs and draw Oh, did you? Yeah, I've won. Oh, I'm, well, I'm buzzing, guys. I'm buzzing. I've won the money. First bet. It's going to carry on going that way. It's the only thing I can celebrate right now, isn't it? So but I'm going to enjoy this, right? I've uh, got nothing else to be happy for <laughs> at the mean. moment. I'm going to enjoy it. Read so, the fine print. That's all I, and you do when you do bet with your mates, just double check what they've if they've put in or a draw because I didn't notice that one. I mean, um, we, we talked about it. It's, it's fine. fine. We're, we're friends. We'll, we'll, look back, we're, we're friends. we'll look back at it on the WhatsApp. <laughs> um, do do check the, the fine print with your mates. Newcastle are on next. I'm going to be checking this out. Um, but do subscribe to the Kickoff YouTube channel and all of the lads around the table. They've all got their own stuff going on. They're killing the game. Big up to the lads. And we will see you next week. Cheers.